What's up, guys? Welcome to a very special episode of the Young Guns podcast. Once again, Timo Meyer is a member of the New Jersey Devils. It has finally happened. The biggest domino of the 2023 trade deadline gets traded today. It's been weeks that we've been hoping that the Devils were going to acquire Timo Meyer. There was, you know, speculation in terms of, you know, will there be uh, Dawson Mercer a part of this deal? Is going to be Alex Holtz a part of this deal? Will he be getting an extension uh, once traded to New Jersey? And surprisingly, it seems like there is no um, extension at the moment, unfortunately. But in terms of the deal, in terms of what the assets were, we are still awaiting what was traded for Timo Meyer? There is no mention yet of what was dealt um, heading to San Jose. So I would like to hear your thoughts essentially on this acquisition of Timo Meyer. As you can see, there's already jersey swaps. I think we were all anticipating this deal to happen for the longest time. Um, let's take some questions here. It seems that Elliot Freeman said that Dawson Mercer being traded to the San Jose, San Jose Sharks is part of the trade. Uh, there was also mentioned that um, there was no talk about uh, Alexander Holtz being part of this deal. I mean, Dawson Mercer has been playing fantastic hockey. Honestly, I wouldn't have included him in a deal. I'm not sure if he's included in this deal. We are still awaiting the details of this trade, but it is possible that he may be part of the deal. We are just awaiting uh, confirmation on what is a part of this deal. But where does, um, you know, Timo Meyer play on the San Jose Sharks. Well, currently he was not playing. He was listed day to day. Um, they said he was actually injured. I'm not sure if he, uh, if I actually believe that. I don't know if you guys believe that either. Um, but I do believe that they were keeping him out for trade related reasons. But normally he would be playing on the top line with Logan Kutzer. In terms of where he would be playing with the New Jersey Devils, well, that's a whole different story because we have uh, the first line of Thomas Tatar, Nico Heischer, and Dawson Mercer. Um, you have uh, Igor uh, Sharangovich, Jack Hughes, and Jesper Bratt. Um, definitely, Timo Meyer would be playing in that top six 100%. There's no doubt in my mind that he wouldn't be playing in the top six right now. I do believe that he would be given power play time as well. Um, in terms of how far do I see the New Jersey Devils going in the playoffs? Well, the sky is the limit at this point. With Timo Meyer being a part of this team, this winning New Jersey Devils team, anything is possible. The only, I would say, team that may give them problems in the playoffs is if they, uh, they face the Boston Bruins at some point. Um, that's going to be something that, um, I would definitely, 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 uh, you know, be really afraid to face because the Boston Bruins did add Orlov and Hathaway. So those are guys that um, uh, make the Boston Bruins so much better heading into the playoffs because they're big boys and they're basically the embodiment of the big bad Bruins. So if the Sharks get Dawson Mercer, this is huge for the rebuild and getting talent for the future. Yeah, uh, I completely uh you know, agree with that. The, the San Jose Sharks need better prospects. They have a couple of them that, you know, will have an impact on San Jose, but I do not believe that they have a core a piece essentially that will push them uh, to be a contending team for years to come. They need a centerpiece, and I think Dawson Mercer could be that if he's a part of the deal. Uh, Vicenzo says, Dark Horse to win the cup. Yeah, I think uh, that's definitely a possibility that the, they could definitely win the Stanley Cup. They have the team to do it now. And I do believe that Jack Hughes would be paired up with Timo Meyer. And if that's the case, oh boy, that's going to be fantastic. Because Timo Meyer um, playing with one of the uh, candidates to, to win MVP this year. Wow. And, you know, Jack Hughes is entering his prime as of the season. So that would be fantastic. Who did the, the Devils give up? We're still awaiting who they gave up. There's no confirmation yet on what they gave up. We're still awaiting the details. Um, there's talk about Alex Holtz. There's talk about uh, Dawson Mercer. So we're still awaiting um, what the pieces are, essentially. But 
Um, as of right now, we'd like to hear your thoughts, guys, on you know this acquisition and you know where do you think Timo Meyer is going to fit on the New Jersey Devils lineup. So let's just keep on refreshing here in terms of the trade details. Yeah, so like I was saying before, there's no um, there's no contract at the moment that was signed uh, for Timo Meyer. Even though that the New Jersey Devils were probably the only team that wanted a contract extension for Timo Meyer because uh, he's only 26 years old and he's going to be a pivotal part of the New Jersey Devils for years to come. So it would only make sense to lock up um, Timo Meyer. Um, especially with that young core of Jesper Bratt, who they are, they're going to have to re-sign as well because he's an RFA um, at the end of the season. You also, you know, Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer are going to be leading the pact um, for the New Jersey Devils for years to come. You know, New Jersey Devils weren't expected to be this competitive this year, and especially, uh, we, you know, when we had um, the Brad Pack come on, uh, he was saying that, you know, it was a shock that they were going to be this good. People thought, they were going to be a good team, but they didn't think they were going to be a top team. And they blew expectations away. Goaltending has been good with uh, Vitek Vanacek. Defense has been probably the best in this in the league, well, led by Dougie Hamilton and um, uh, Severson. And, oh, my God, they still have Luke Hughes that could potentially be called up uh, once his NCAA um, uh, season is over. He could join the team for the playoffs. So that could be fantastic as well. Uh, don't know much about Timo outside of stats. He is a, is he a top ten winger in the league? I wouldn't say top ten winger, but he's definitely an underrated uh, winger, someone that deserves a lot more recognition. And I think it's because he's he's playing in San Jose that he doesn't get that. But now that he's a member of the New Jersey Devils, I do believe that a lot of people are going to be talking about Timo Meyer for years to come, especially if they get a contract signed for Timo Meyer. Surely the Devils are giving Timo Meyer an extension if they're trading for him. Well, that's what they wanted originally, but um, Pierre LeBron is reporting that at the moment there is no um, contract extension. So we're still waiting. Uh, and just to quote what he said exactly, there is no Meyer contract extension as part of this deal. The Devils became comfortable doing the trade without having to sign him to an extension as a part of it, even though at first they wanted an extension. So, yeah. I know there was Vegas that was interested, but they got um, Ivan Barbashev. Uh, there was talk about um, the Toronto Maple Leafs, but they got Noel Achari and Ryan O'Reilly, so that didn't happen. We know that um, you know at one point there was even the Rangers that were in the mix, but they look like they're a lock for Patty Kane, so that's not going to happen. So everyone essentially got their guys. You know, uh, Winnipeg was linked to uh, Timo Meyer as well. The St. Louis Blues. We're willing to give up some of their newly acquired assets and uh, uh, to acquire Timo Meyer. And I heard that they were willing to give up their two first round picks they got. So um, that's kind of crazy, in my opinion, especially that they want to rebuild. And they would think that Timo Meyer immediately would make them so much better. And I do believe that he would make them good. But I do believe they need to embrace a rebuild and strongly build around Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo. Um, and I, you know, like it's, it would be weird to see a team that's selling and then automatically they're buyers all of a sudden. So, I mean, yeah, Edmonton has done nothing. Yeah. Um, they were in the mix for Evander, uh, sorry for Patrick Kane. They were in the mix for Eric Carlson. Now I don't even know what's happening at this point. At this point, um, you know, I, I don't think they're even going to make a big move. I think they might just end up with a defenseman like Gavrikov, for example. Um, so, you know, there's that as well. But, you know, we're still waiting the details, guys. So if you're still wondering what's going on here, um, there's no confirmation yet on what the deal is for Timo Meyer. It's been talk spoken about for the last couple of days now. We've been talking about, you know, what's going to happen with Timo Meyer. You know, we all thought that at one point um, the Vegas Golden Knights were going to up their offer. Even the Carolina Hurricanes at one point were mentioned as potential suitors for Timo Meyer. 
But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And I'm I'm pretty curious on what the Carolina Hurricanes do now. Now that a lot of the top players um, are you know off the table in terms of offense, and a lot of people are saying like, like all the trades are happening before the deadline, like every single year. So what will we be left with come trade deadline? Is uh, Jesse Poliarvi getting traded? I mean, at this point, I do believe he will be get traded. He will he will be traded. If a guy like Ev- uh, Evgeny Dandanov was traded, if um, Kravstov was traded, and g- guys that essentially that um, you know were basically cap dumps, even though the Montreal Canadiens got uh, um, uh, Denis uh, Gurianov, which was a fantastic deal for the Habs. I don't know what Dallas was thinking there. Puliarvi, I do see him being a fit on the Hurricanes, honestly. And I don't think they're going to have to give up much for him. Um, you know, there's been a lot of um, cap gymnastics essentially done by Edmonton. When Yamamoto came back, they sent down Holloway. They sent down Dearne. And, you know, uh, then Holloway got injured in the AHL. They called back uh, Dearne. It's been a crazy time in Edmonton, and you know they've been up and down this season. So I don't know what's really going on with them. And I'm hoping that they, you know, they start finding consistency to their game heading into the playoffs because they could be a very deadly team. And goaltending and defense has definitely been an issue for the Hurricanes. Buffalo on Chikrin. Well, Chikrin is a guy that's been uh, <laughs> scratched for trade related reasons for the longest time. Um, so um, will he be traded? Honestly, it's been like two years now. We've been hoping that he, he was going to get dealt. Even he wants out of uh, of New Jersey. So I don't know what's going on there. I mean, sorry, uh, out of uh, Arizona. And uh, he's been linked to St. Louis. He's been linked to Columbus. But I heard that he wouldn't be happy going to a team like Columbus because, you know, they're rebuilding and they're worse than the Arizona Coyotes at the moment. Um, Buffalo has been mentioned. Boston was mentioned before they got Orlov. Uh, so we'll see what happens in terms of Chikrin. Canucks need to trade Myers and Shen for picks. I do believe that Shen will be traded. Uh, there's a high, there's a high demand for him. Apparently, they want a second or a third round pick for him. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they could get a little bit more than just that. Uh, Tyler Myers, that's going to be hard to move. But I mean, you know, they're going to have to retain some salary. Essentially, the Vancouver Canucks have have put a lot of guys on LTIR and on IR. So, uh, you know. I do believe that they're going to have to eat some cap space and they could, I mean, sorry, eat some uh, salary uh, because they have enough cap space to do it. So we'll see what happens there. Paula, wow. Timo to New Jersey. Wow. Just connected for the first time today. So you, you broke the news for me guys. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. <laughs> it means a lot. And uh, we're glad that we were the first ones. Uh, I also saw that Barry Trotz is replacing David Poli as the Predators GM. Yeah. So uh, Poli is essentially replacing, um, Sorry, David Poli will be announcing his retirement and stepping down as of June 30th. And Barry Trotz, who did not want to come back as an uh, as a coach this season, he was uh, hoping to get a GM job, and he does that. Going back to Nashville, you know, he's had a rich history with the Nashville Predators. He was a coach there for over a decade, if I'm not mistaken, before he went to Washington and then the Islanders. And uh, you know, I'm very happy for Barry Trotz. He deserves it. He was one of the best coaches in the league at one point. And uh, I still think he would be one of the best coaches in the league if he was still coaching, but you know, I'm nothing but good luck to him and uh, you know, well wishes as well for the Nashville Predators organization who seem to be rebuilding since they got rid of, you know, Nito Ryder and uh, they're probably going to get rid of Dante Fabro. I've, I've heard connections between Fabro going to the San Jose Sharks. So we'll see what happens there in terms of that. No one uh, would take Tyler Myers. Yeah. I do believe that honestly, there was there was talk about the um, the um, Toronto Maple Leafs at one point, but I don't uh, believe that that's going to be the case anymore because I think they're better off getting a cheaper guy like Luke Shen. Honestly, I think he's a better fit. Guys, there's still no news yet on what the trade return is for um, Timo Meyer. We're still waiting, so please stay tuned with that but if you guys have any questions in terms of uh trade related uh proposals uh considering players that have yet to be traded make sure to write in the comment section below so i could uh talk to you guys about it and give my own opinion on who could be traded um let's take a look here in terms of the other comments paula if you scratch someone for that long and the new team wants him to start right away to make a difference i think 
is not it's not a good thing to have him not playing for that long. Yeah, you know, he's going to get rusty essentially. Um you're going to need him to partake in practices. Um you know, I'm hoping that a deal will happen soon in terms of um Chikrin, especially Gavrikov as well and even Luke Shen has been scratched the last couple of games too. So, I mean, there's there's cases like Tyler Mott and Orlov and Hathaway that were scratched and then immediately got traded. So we'll see what happens there. Ottawa might get a Uyghur or Perieko. Yeah, they've been linked to uh, Perieko, the Ottawa Senators. So we'll see what happens there. Um, they got rid of um, Zaitsev's contract, so they have a lot more cap space to work with. And Mackenzie Uyghur, that's an interesting name. Calgary are not happy with how he's been playing. And um, he just signed a new contract that starts as of next season. And same thing with Jonathan Huberto. They've both been underperforming. And you see Matthew Kachuk flourishing with the Florida Panthers, even though the Florida Panthers have been struggling this year and they've been up and down, very inconsistent. So, you know, those are good possibilities for Ottawa. They need a top four defenseman. And they've been looking for one since the offseason and maybe even before then. Could you see Capo Caco involved in a Patrick trade, uh, Patrick King trade before the Rangers and Blackhawks? Honestly speaking, I don't believe they're gonna um, they're gonna trade Capo Caco, and here's why: the New York Rangers um, put the Chicago Blackhawks in a really bad spot because um, Patrick King only wants to go there; that's his desired um, destination, and they've done such a good job marketing themselves for Patrick King that uh, whatever offer. Um, they give Chicago is essentially what they're going to have to accept unless they just keep Patrick Kane and he walks during the offseason, which he could re-sign, sorry, sign a contract with the New York Rangers during the offseason for basically nothing. So might as well get um, an offer as opposed to getting nothing at all. So it, it kind of reminds me of the Claude Giroux trade where he only wanted to go to Florida and they literally low-balled uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. But Owen Tippett's been, you know, finding his groove, essentially, with the with the Philadelphia Flyers, so I'm happy for that. And they got a, a couple of other assets. If I'm not mistaken, they got a first-round pick as well. So that's great in terms of how that's turning out for Philly. And Clojure walked at the end of the day, and he went to sign with Ottawa, and he's been having a resurgent season with the uh, Ottawa Senators because he wasn't doing that great with Philly the last couple of seasons. And he really stepped up his game with Florida, and he's – continued to be consistent with the Ottawa Senators. Michael Backlund gets traded. Um, if they decide to um, basically be sellers heading into the deadline, um, you know, that's always a possibility. But right now, Minnesota and Calgary have been very inconsistent up and down uh, in terms of the standings as of late. So I do not believe that uh, they will be sellers. I think they're going to be conservative buyers. I know that there was a report that Bill Guerin, the general manager of Minnesota, um, was actually hoping to be buyers and possibly add a significant piece heading into the deadline. And what kills the Minnesota Wild essentially was trading away Kevin Fiala, who's been absolutely amazing for the LA Kings. And I do believe, you know, that's turning out to be a mistake, even though they got a first round pick um, and they got uh, Brock uh, Faber, if I'm not mistaken, who's a good defensive prospect. Um, yeah, uh, Fiala is absolutely an amazing fit with the LA Kings. Do you think Eric Carlson gets traded? Well, he has one of the craziest contracts in the league, so that is not uh, desirable for teams, especially considering that we're in an era where cap space is so crucial and people would do anything um, to basically make um, cap space happen. So I'm not sure what happens with Eric Carlson moving forward, but I do believe that um, definitely there's a possibility he does get traded. He was linked to the Buffalo Sabres who do have cap space, so that could work. And they also have the assets. They have one of the best prospect pools in the league. So that could, you know, definitely get done. Uh, in terms of Edmonton, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so, you know, kiss that goodbye. So I know Soccer Insight said, um, could you see Eric Crossing at a trade to the Oilers? I do not believe that's going to happen. Um, another possibility could be Seattle, I would say. I think they need uh, a, an anchor on uh, defense. And, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Adrian Dater. Uh, the reporter of the Colorado Avalanche reported that the Colorado Avalanche are kicking tires on John Klimberg. 
So add that to your list of possibilities that could happen in terms of trade breakdowns that we're going to be discussing. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel as we are covering the Timo Meyer blockbuster trade. So Dumba to Detroit. I think that's a good fit. I think that that could definitely work. Um, what would they give up for Dumba? I think they want a first round pick. Uh, he's definitely not worth that in my opinion. He's far removed from being the player that he once was. And, you know, he's being paid a little bit over $6 million right now. So I don't believe that's the best thing to do in terms of Detroit. I think they should give up a lot less, but they have a good prospect pool too. So if Minnesota wants something in return, uh, that's, you know, always a possibility. I know that Detroit wants to move uh, Philip Zadina and there was talks about Joe Valeno because they need a change of scenery. So that's always a possibility to see maybe one of those guys move. But for Dumba, I highly doubt they would do that. I think they could give a lot less for Dumba in my opinion. So um, next questions. Guys, keep on asking me questions. We're going to be here for a little while until we get news on what's going on with uh timo meyer do you think that ottawa should try to get a top four uh, bef uh i'm guessing defenseman before the new owners come in and fire pierre dorian and dj smith i think pierre dorian has done a fantastic job uh, especially this off season uh the ottawa senators are heading into the right direction they're you know they're close to a playoff spot too it's been very very tight in the east with um, the Florida Panthers, Buffalo Sabres, New York Islanders, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. And, you know, it's going to be a battle to the end. And I think the Washington Capitals have solidified themselves as sellers. So expect Nick Jensen and Lars Eller to be traded um, in the upcoming days. So um, Dorian, I think he stays. DJ Smith, that's a whole different situation. I do believe that he could be fired. And I do believe that Ryan Reynolds will be um either majority owner or part owner or um minority owner of the ottawa centers but i know that um Bettman definitely wants ryan reynolds a part of the uh, ownership that's for sure why wouldn't you want ryan reynolds he's one of the hottest actors right now not talking about looks but yes he is a good looking guy in terms of demand he he bought a soccer team in uh, England, if I'm not mistaken, and he's promoted the crap out of that team. They have a television show um, about him and the other actor that bought the show. So he would do the same thing for Ottawa. And in terms of marketing wise for the NHL, we all know that the NHL needs to be better at marketing. And Ryan Reynolds is a good addition to the NHL if he's the owner of the Ottawa Senators. He has he has said where he wants to go. Hmm. Um, Timo time. Yeah, Timo Meyer is a member of the New Jersey Devils, but we're still waiting what the asking price. I mean, we know what the asking price was. They were asking for a first round pick. Uh, there was talk about Alexander Holtz, um, but we have yet to find out what the asking price is as of right now. We're all still waiting what's going on here. Um, so there's a little note from Cap Friendly here saying that the New Jersey Devils only have $2 million in cap space right now. If Myers retained at 50%, he would consume $3 million. Therefore, it is likely another roster piece is going back to San Jose to make the numbers work. Uh, the Brad Pack did come on uh, to cover the uh, New Jersey Devils trade targets a couple of days ago. And honestly, I do not believe that... Uh, they would definitely get rid of a top piece. But there's been talk about potentially D uh, Damon Severson being moved because Luke Hughes uh, will will be joining, most likely be joining the New Jersey Devils uh, after his NCAA uh, season is done, be right before the playoffs. So, you know, they have leverage in terms of who they could move uh, in terms of pieces. I agree with Decoy that if Minnesota moves someone, is Dumba. Yeah, he's been a guy that, you know, He's not been a, a good fit in Minnesota for a while now. There's been rumors about Dumba being moved for the longest time. And I think since this, that this is his last year under contract and he's going to be a UFA, this is the season to get it done. No news on what the Devils gave up for Timo. Yeah, there's no news yet. Any thoughts on Penguins trade possibility? Yeah, there's. I think they honestly, hear me out, I think they get Brock Besser. I know there's been a lot of you know talk about them getting Ivan Barbashev, 
but that didn't happen, unfortunately. He went to the Vegas Golden Knights today. Uh, I do believe that he will be a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Brock Besser, um, because that's what the Pittsburgh Penguins do all the time. They buy low, essentially, and look at Brian Rust. Look at how he's turned out. He's, he was a prospect that no one thought he would be as good as he is, um, and he's been you know blowing it out of the park, honestly. Uh, Jason Zucker could be a piece that they could trade uh, as well. Um, he's been having a good season, so his value is at an all-time high. He's he's not what they were supposed to get in return, unfortunately, when they got him from Minnesota. He was doing so well in Minnesota. When he went to Pittsburgh, he he, he declined, and he's he hasn't been the same player since. But this year, he showed some flashes of brilliance, and he's been playing fantastic, in my opinion. And I think if they want to get rid of him now, now is the time to get rid of him. So maybe a Jason Zucker for Brock Besser swap. That's a possibility. Two guys that need a change of scenery, uh, even though Brock Besser, if I'm mistaken, is younger. So we'll see what happens there. But they do need a defenseman. I do believe the biggest mistake the Pittsburgh Penguins made was trading away Mike Matheson and, and uh, John Marino, especially John Marino, who's such a pivotal piece of the New Jersey Devils um, decor. And they got Ty Smith and like another pick in return. And Ty Smith spent most of his time in the AHL. Um, so. I mean, yeah, they're going to have to make moves. And I do believe that Hextall is going to want to save his job, essentially, uh, and try to be buyers because the Pittsburgh Penguins haven't been good in the playoffs the last couple of seasons. They've been eliminated in the first round. Uh, what did the Devils give up? I uh, still didn't get news on that. He didn't come with an extension, so he should cost less. Maybe. Uh, yeah, no no news yet. I, uh, uh, I'm he I hear that Tom Wilson might get traded. I mean, the Capitals are open for business, but I think they're looking to trade guys like Lars Eller and Nick Jensen instead. So we'll see what happens there in terms of uh, uh, trade possibilities. Just reported, uh, Devils gave up all of Connecticut and every Jersey Mike's in the States. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, people on Twitter keep saying Mercer. Honestly, if they trade Dawson Mercer, that is a huge mistake for the uh, New Jersey Devils. Mercer has been fantastic these last couple of day, uh, games. He's been so pivotal uh, to the games that they have won. And I would be really upset if I'm a New Jersey Devils fan if they got rid of Mercer. And Evan R is saying that Mercer is not part of the trade. Why would he? Honestly, it would be a huge mistake. Um, do you see James Ramirez like getting traded? Yes, the Philadelphia Flyers have re have made it clear that that's a piece that they do want to trade. He's currently on the last season of his contract being paid $7 million. So we'll see what happens there. Um, they're going to have to eat some caps. Uh, they're going to have to eat some salary uh, and retain um, some of his contract in order for a team to fit his contract uh, uh, under uh, the cap. Uh, John Tutorella has gotten ma as many points out of the Flyers this season based on their overall talent. Yeah. Yeah, Philly is not doing so well right now. And uh, we'll see what happens there. Even with the whole Ivan Povarov situation, I know a lot of people are either upset about that or they support him. And honest, honestly, guys, that's your own opinions. I don't discriminate. Uh, we're open to everything here. But um, honestly, you know, they're going to have to trade some players out of Philadelphia and embrace a, free, uh, a full rebuild, essentially. Or else... Um, the general manager is going to be fired, in my opinion. Uh, he has done nothing special in the last couple of years. Uh, do you think the Kane deal gets done tonight? So this is an interesting question. The Kane deal, uh, unfortunately, even though they got rid of Kravstov yesterday, they need to clear out a little bit more money to make this work. There's reports by uh, Darren Drager and uh, Frank Saravelli and also Pierre Lebrun that it's most likely not going to happen until Wednesday, and it could happen as of late three o'clock on Friday, which is the, the day of the deadline. So um, honestly, and it, uh, but, but it's going to get done. He will be a New York Ranger 100%. I strongly believe that. I just don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, EJ Hedrick just tweeted that Dawson Mercer will not be part of any deal to get uh, Timo Myers. Thank God. <laughs> do, you th uh, do you see the Rangers returning Vladimir per uh, Tarasenko or Patrick Kane next season? Uh, it seems tough due to the salary cap. Yeah, I do not believe that that will happen. I, I think they will hit the market and become UFAs. I do believe that Patrick Kane will possibly 
and it would be a dream come true for a lot of Sabres fans and even for himself since he's a huge Buffalo Sabres fan growing up to sign with the Buffalo Sabres so we'll see what happens there in terms of Vladimir Tarasenko I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe signs with the New York Islanders that's been a, a, a team that's been linked to Tarasenko for the longest time so we'll see what happens there but anything's possible we already know what happens during the um, offseason players try to sign lud ludicrous um uh, ludicrous deals that are very ludicrous um, in terms of uh, salary and in terms of length. So like eight year contracts, like $8 million, $9 million. Uh, you know, they just keep on going up in terms of salary. Uh, Freeman is saying Mercer's involved. I am so confused. Uh, <laughs> EJ Her uh, Herdrick is reporting no Mercer involved. Yeah, probably involving Nemich, who isn't a huge hit to the devil is better than involving Mercer. I mean, he was drafted second overall. I don't think that's going to happen, essentially. I think that would be a huge mistake if uh, they trade that away. I think Alexander Holtz makes the most sense, in my opinion, in terms of uh, making a trade uh, for Timo Meyer. I do not believe that they should trade anyone else um, apart from like any of the prospects that have been mentioned. But let's continue refreshing here in terms of the assets that could be heading to uh, the New Jersey Devils. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please uh, subscribe to our channel. So it's reported, we got news, that the San Jose Sharks are retaining 50% of Myers' cap hit this season. So that's the first domino to fall in terms of this deal. In terms of what's going back to San Jose, we have yet to find out. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to be here for a while, most likely. Uh, I think Brock Besser would be a good fit with the Wild. He is from Minnesota, too. So the problem with that is the money. They need to make the money work, essentially, for that to happen. And as of right now, uh, I would see possibly Minnesota trading away Dumba. Um to clear cap space or there's been rumors that vancouver has been interested in dumba so why not make a deal involving dumba and brock besser so brock besser heads to minnesota and they get secondary scoring that's much needed since um they lost kevin fiala and i do believe that you know dumba going to vancouver makes their defensive core a lot better i mean it's up it's an upgrade on tyler myers right so <laughs> and oliver ekman larson Gotta wait for an official report. Wait too many yes and no's in the Twitterverse. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Jeremy. Fair. Hextall said he's looking for players to help now. I would say top six is untouchable. Uh, Zucker has been amazing for us. Yeah, maybe he does stay. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens. I could live without Sharon Govich, Bogvist, Holtz, if need be. Yeah, uh, Sharon Govich is another name that was mentioned in terms of... Uh, of, of, of a piece that could be heading to New Jersey. So we'll see what happens there. Do you think the Panthers sell in two or three years from now? Their prospect core is going to fall apart with all of those first and second round picks, if you ask me. Um, as long as Barkov and Kachuk are there, I do not believe that they're going to be um, sellers anytime soon. I think they're going to have to go through a retool. That's for sure. Um, yeah, they're going to have to reconstruct that decor. You know, they lost a Uyghur. It was a massive piece. And, um, yeah, goaltending. Spencer Knight checked into um, the NHL help facility, I think. That's what it's called. Or the facility, basically, to get help for addicts. I don't know what's going on, if it's a problem mentally or if he's addicted to alcohol or maybe drugs or something. So we'll see what happens there. We're wishing well uh, in terms of that situation for the Florida, Florida Panthers organization and Spencer Knight. So we'll see uh, if he comes back this season. But as of right now, Barbowski is the starting goaltender, and he's been very underwhelming, especially with that contract. Uh, Mercer was confirmed not to be part of this trade. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. Uh, yeah, no Mercer part of this deal. Uh, fans will uprise with Mercer. Yeah, um, Devil fans do not want to see that happen. You know, the Brad Pack came a couple of days ago, and he was saying that they should keep Mercer at uh, at all costs. Never mind, it's been reported Mercer is not part of the deal. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. We keep Mc <laughs> Mc Dog. <laughs> Uh, I've been refreshing Twitter every 15 seconds for the last half hour. Give us the damn trade details. Yeah, as of right now, the only detail that was mentioned is that San Jose is retaining 50% of, um, of his contract. So we're going to see what happens here. 
Fitz is out of his mind if he trades Mercer. Yeah, that's not happening. We're keeping Mercer. Yeah. Uh, do you see Thatcher Demko getting traded? Uh, I do believe that there's been reports that he does not want to go to um, to uh, to any other team. He wants to stay with Vancouver. But there's also been reports that he wants to get traded. So I don't know what's going on there. I know that the Pittsburgh Penguins have been linked to him. Uh, Los Angeles Kings, the Buffalo Sabres. So honestly, if I'm the Vancouver Canucks, they don't really have the best prospect pool for defensemen. So what I would do is I would target Buffalo since they have uh, Devon or Devon, uh, Devon Livy or Devin Livy. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Devin Livy. So that's a, a possibility that could go as a part of a package deal for Thatcher Demko. But as of right now, there's a lot of talk about John Gibson being traded. And I know that uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins were linked to him recently and also the Los Angeles Kings, but that would be weird going from uh, the Ducks to the Kings. They're both in the same state of California. Do you think St. Louis Blues are making trades? I mean, they've basically got rid of everybody at this point. A Cherry, a Tarasenko, Barbashev, uh, O'Reilly. Um, there's been rumors about maybe moving out Tory Krug or possibly moving out um, Perrieco. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's always room for for more trades. Maybe Brandon Sad could be uh, traded. That's always a possibility. But the de definitely the St. Louis Blues are open for business. 50% uh, of Timo's contract is staying with San Jose. Yeah. That's what was reported before. Uh, I do believe another player is part of the deal. Uh, yeah, they're going to have no choice to um, get rid of another player in order for this to work. Because if I'm mistaken, they only have like $2 million in cap space. That's what was reported. What is the deal? We're still waiting on that. I would say first hold Severson as a possibility. Yeah, that's always a good possibility. The Wild, yes. Hopefully they make a move. Where do you see Jacob... Chikrin getting traded to. It seemed like he was getting traded to the Kings. Yeah, he was supposed to get traded to the Kings, and that deal fell apart very quickly, and it's been quiet ever since. We do not know what's going on. We don't know um, what they're going to be getting in terms of uh, trade value. All we do know is that he is going to get traded finally. Uh, it seemed like he was getting traded. Okay, yeah, Coyotes didn't want to take on Cal Pedersen's contract. I mean... The Coyotes are the dumping ground of the NHL. They've been taking a lot of bad contracts. They even took Shea Weber's um, contract, and he's practically retired. Uh, and they helped the, the Vegas Golden Knights. So, um, you know, anything's really possible. So, I mean, Chikrin, it's going to be an interesting case. I think that's only going to be solved as we get closer to the deadline on Friday. Max Domi and Luke Shen to Dallas. Uh, Dallas got rid of... Um, uh, Jory, Jory, uh, Goryanov today and they got Dandanov which you know he's fell off he's 33 years old now I'm surprised the Canadians actually got a former first round pick for um, Dandanov a couple weeks ago and, or a couple days ago actually they were saying that um, the Canadians were going to get nothing for Dandanov and here we are the Canadians get a guy who, who was drafted in, uh, 12th overall uh, a couple years ago in the first round and he's going to be a reclamation project for Montreal. You guys could check out our, our last couple of trade breakdown videos. We did the Dandanov for Guryanov trade, the Barbashev trade. We've been basically covering every single trade. So, guys, make sure to check out those trade breakdowns and subscribe if you haven't already. How's your day going? My day's been crazy. These last couple of days, I've been doing trade breakdowns every single like hour practically uh our co-host uh, luca is currently on a trip he's going to be coming back tonight so i've been going solo these last couple of days and honestly it's been fun but it's been pretty hectic you know making the thumbnails getting the uh the, the data uh to cover the breakdowns uh pff preparing the the youtube episodes as a whole with the tags and everything it's been crazy honestly but thank you for asking <laughs> uh who did they trade well we're still waiting on details but we're going to continue refreshing guys uh we're still awaiting on who um the devils gave up i believe another pl a sharks player is part of the deal with Meyer going to new jersey wow so there's a second player involved in this deal heading to new jersey i wonder who it is does he take his buddy Thomas Hurdle? <laughs> I highly doubt he just signed a contract extension. Least fans don't want Shen back. I mean, 
I heard a lot of people saying they wanted Luke Shen. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Um, G- Gavrikov could be an option as well. Who are the Oilers trading for? I mean, there was uh, links about... They were linked to Noel Cherry at one point. That didn't happen. He got traded to Toronto. Eric Carlson, that was a possibility. Timo Meyer, but now he's a member of the New Jersey Devils. So that didn't happen. Um, honestly, at this point, I don't know who they trade for, but I know they were interested in Joel Edmondson, and there was rumors about uh, Pooley Arvey and a first-round pick being traded to Montreal, which would be crazy. I think that would be a steal for the Montreal Canadiens, but Kent Hughes has been basically fleecing every single team he's done business with. And... Yeah, so I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And I think the Edmonton Oilers are getting very desperate, especially with the way they've been playing. They've been very inconsistently defensively. Devils got him. Yeah, finally. They finally got him. <laughs> um, breaks my heart as a Kaniac not getting Meyer. This ask was too way, uh, way too high, though. Most likely Jarvis first and top prospect. Yeah, um, honestly, the two best teams that were linked... Uh, to acquire Timo Meyer were the Carolina Hurricanes and the New Jersey Devils. And ultimately, the Devils were aggressive since the beginning. So I'm not surprised that he goes to New Jersey. But um, I definitely do believe that um, the Hurricanes will make a splash. But with all these names being traded recently, I don't know who ends up getting uh, the call to basically say, hey, by the way, this is what we're acquiring as a forward. Max Pacioretty's out. Um, there's a, there's rumors about Andrea Cass, um, you know, going going uh, to Europe. So you know, we need a top forward moving forward, heading into the playoffs. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, where does Besser go? Like I was saying before, I think Pittsburgh would be a good fit. There's been Minnesota that was mentioned as a good fit as well. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of where Besser could end up, make sure to write it in the comment section below because uh, Besser could go anywhere, but it's his it's his cap hit essentially. He's signed on for a couple more seasons, and you know he's been playing a lot better recently, especially under Rick Tockett. But I wonder what they get for Besser. Uh, he's 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 projected to be uh, an elite sniper, even though he hasn't been playing like it. But a couple of years ago, he's been playing great, and unfortunately, he lost his dad uh, due to cancer last season. That affected his game a lot last year and even this year. But uh, you know, he definitely needs a change of scenery. His agent made it clear, and the organization of the Vancouver Canucks made it clear. Do you think Lafferty and Domini get traded? Honestly. Um, Lafferty will get traded. He's been um, scratched for trade-related reasons, so I definitely do see that happening. Um, so I don't know where he goes exactly, but I think they could get a, as high as a second-round pick for Lafferty. Uh, Max Domi, um, he, I know he's made it clear that he wants to stay with the New Jersey Devils and he would like to sign a, an extension with them. But Domi's having the best season he's had since he was with the Canadians where he passed the 70-point plateau. So I honestly do not know, um, you know, what Chicago decides to do. If they don't get, you know, the desired trade value for um, Max Domi, they might as well just re-sign him. But, um, you know, he's been a fantastic fit for Chicago. I know I put up a poll a couple of days ago on Max Domi uh, getting traded and where he goes. And uh, I got a couple comments saying he doesn't get traded he, and he shouldn't get traded. So, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of fans that want him to stay. But in terms of Max Domi, I think I would say a second round pick as well. I mean, they, maybe they could, they could capitalize on his value this year and get a first round pick because Max Domi and Lafferty are doing very well on a poor Chicago Blackhawks team. And they're on a five game winning streak right now, which is, you know, kissing their chances away to get Bedard. Uh, telling you Anderson will get traded. I'm guessing you're talking about Josh Anderson uh, going to be an offer that blows them out of the water. Uh, they can't see no to that. Uh, honestly, with all these players getting traded, uh, maybe Josh Anderson goes to the Carolina Hurricanes. That's a possibility. Maybe Mike Hoffman. That's another name that's been thrown around. Jonathan Drouin is another name that's been thrown around in trade rumors. Max Domi to the Bruins. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Bruins are pretty much done. I think they might add maybe another defenseman or they're probably going to move out a contract out. Um, but I definitely do not believe they're going to add another player like Domi. Domi is going to go to a team that needs uh, secondary scoring. 
maybe he goes back to the Hurricanes. He was traded last year uh, to the Hurricanes at the 2022 trade deadline. Zuther Zutherland, not a part of the deal either. Anderson won't get traded. Yeah, I know there's, a, there's been a whole debate with Anderson. Does he get traded? Does he not get traded? Uh, should he get traded? You know, a lot of Hab fans love him, but it seems like people outside of the NHL don't love him. So, I mean, we'll see what happens uh, with Anderson. We've hit 300 viewers as of right now. So thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We're still waiting the for the... um. The details. We only know that another player is heading to New Jersey with Timo Meyer, and that Timo Meyer's contract will be retained 50%. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to our channel, guys, and make sure to check out other trade breakdown videos as we await for the details on Timo Meyer. Honestly, hoping Sharks get Holtz and slash or uh, sorry, and slash or Tatar and some picks. That's a possibility. Tatar has been playing really good this season. They could capitalize on moving in. If I'm not mistaken, he is a UFA uh, at the end of the season. But at the same time, you really want to start trading away players if you want to go deep into the playoffs. We'll see about that. Do you think the Hurricanes are going to make any trades? Yeah, they're they're in the the, the market for um for a uh, a score a scoring winger, secondary scoring essentially to replace Max Pacioretty. Um, who's out for the rest of the season. He tore his Achilles, unfortunately, after playing, like, what, two or three games with them. Um, he got operated during the offseason, then came back midseason and got hurt again. So, you know, it's going to take about a good, you know, close to a year, I would say, for him to, re uh, you know, <laughs> recover from that. Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, Domi uh, could go to the Winnipeg Jets. I know they got Nino Niederreiter, but I don't think they're done. I think they might add a little bit more. Maybe they add a guy like Chikrin on defense. I know they've been wanting to add defense for a while. But, uh, you know, they're having a good season and a surprising one too. What do you think the Wild are going to do at the trade deadline? Uh, I do believe that they're going to want to add secondary scoring. Uh, Bill Guerin wants to be a big player heading into the deadline. He wants to add... And uh, they're going to have to get rid of some cap space, too. So I do believe Dumba might get traded. Maybe even a guy like Galagoski might get traded. Uh, but a contract's going to have to leave Minnesota in order for them to acquire anybody. And they've been uh, a third party in uh, retaining salary in, uh, in, in blockbuster deals. They were... Um, retaining salary on the Orlov deal with Boston and the Capitals. They retained uh, O'Reilly's um, uh, salary as well uh, between the St. Louis Blues and Toronto Maple Leafs. So, you know, that's another thing that happened as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they're done doing that, honestly. But I know the Montreal Canadiens and Vancouver Canucks and Chicago Blackhawks don't mind their retaining uh, salary in uh, three-way deals. I want Nemich. I'm guessing you're... Uh, a San Jose fan. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if they're going to trade Eric Carlson and, uh, you know, Velasic is way past his prime and that contract's horrible, they're going to have to rebuild that decor. And, you know, Mario Ferrero is really good, but it takes more than just that to have a good decor. Um, Nemich stays a devil. Uh, New York will take New Jersey out in the first round. I mean, that's always a possibility. And guys, like, it's not a surprise that New Jersey makes a, a move for Meyer here because Ter uh, Tarasenko went to the New York Rangers and Horvat went to the New York Islanders. So whenever a team in the state of New York makes a trade between those three teams, they always need to one-up each, each other. So if the Islanders make a trade, well, the Rangers and the Devils are going to have to do the same thing too in order just to say, like, I have the biggest balls of New York. We're the kings of New York, essentially. That's what it is. And that's what it has always been in the state of New York in terms of how they conduct the business. Um, so I mean, I'm not surprised, but I mean, with the Rangers also adding Kane, you know, you know, that that's awesome for them too. And I'm not happy with how things have turned out for the Rangers. They acquired Mikola, Mott, and uh Tarasenko, and they're on a losing streak all of a sudden. I guess that affected the chemistry somehow. And the Islanders they're like in it and they're out of it. Like they're going to be fighting till the end for a playoff spot. And I think Bula Morello's job is on the line. Uh, what do you think the Sharks get in return? I think it starts with Alexander Holtz and uh, a first round pick, but we're still awaiting for the details. Well, I'm, I'm going to continue refreshing guys um, as we await for the details, but 
Um, while the Sharks are trying to trade Kevin LeBlanc, I do not believe he is a part of the Meyer trade. So, yeah, that's another piece that the San Jose Sharks want to trade. Uh, Kevin LeBlanc is a guy that, uh, he, you know, he started off really good with the San Jose Sharks, and he's declined over the last couple of seasons, unfortunately. So we're going to see what happens there. But I do believe that, uh, you know, they could get a second-round pick, after, uh, you know, for Kevin LeBlanc or maybe a third round pick. Uh, he's not the same player he once was, but I think he does need a change of scenery. Uh, that's another player that needs a change of scenery. I think there's a lot of players that need change of scenery. Kraftstov was one of them. Uh, Guryanov was another one. Those two guys got traded. Um, Anthony Volier was the one that got moved. He needed a change of scenery. But there's still guys left in the market like Puliarvi and Besser. Uh, the Canes have to make a trade $10 million in cap space. If now is not the time to push, when then? Meyer would have definitely fit the system, but I see Jenner, Granlund, and Kane a possibility. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I do believe those are possibilities. Uh, New Jersey, uh, you know, getting Meyer and the Hurricanes wanted Meyer and and Barbashev's out of the you know the picture as well. A lot of guys are out of the picture at this moment. So I mean, honestly, I do not know what the Canes could do at this point. But you know, maybe they take a flyer on a guy like Brock Besser, Pooley RV for cheap, you know, low risk, high reward type of thing. Um Nashville Predators are sellers. The Washington Capitals are sellers. Maybe they go after Anthony Manta. That's another guy who needs a change of scenery. Um <laughs> Desperate change of need of scenery. Um, I'll say move Domi if you're Chicago and resign him in the offseason. Yeah, that's a possibility. Like we could see that with a couple of players. We could see that with Ryan O'Reilly uh going back to St. Louis because I know he was the captain there for a, a while and he won the Stanley Cup there. If you think Tarasenko is going back, no way. He's wanted out of St. Louis for the longest time. So kiss the chances of that happening. Goodbye. Um I would uh, say that Chicago resigning Domi is a good possibility. Maybe even Kane uh, resigns with Chicago uh, during the offseason. But I don't know. Maybe he wants to go somewhere else. The St. Louis Blues have done really well in acquiring prospects and draft picks. We're trading Tarasenko, O'Reilly, and Barbashev. Yeah, they're really, uh, they've been the best uh, sellers so far. They've got a lot of pieces for those those players. And uh pfft. I think they've done a fantastic job. But if they do take those pieces and try to acquire other players like it's been rumored, they were in, interested in Timo Meyer. They even offered a deal uh, to acquire Timo Meyer. They, they, they wanted to offer their two first-round picks, one of them uh, that they acquired from the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, if I'm mistaken, or the, uh, the Tarasenko trade from New York, which could be the Rangers' pick or Dallas's pick. It's up to the Rangers, I think, to decide uh, what happens there. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on in St. Louis, but it seems a lot of players are out, out of the door, that's for sure, and they're going to want to retool. Um, Sharon Govich, Nemich, Makamandulin, and a, four, a first. I don't know if that's a trade proposal or if that's actually what went through. Honestly, I think Domi and McCabe would be perfect for Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, McCabe has been a top defenseman that's been available. Um, he was linked to Toronto. He was linked to uh, many teams, and he has yet to be traded. So we'll see what happens there. The only trade Chicago has done, if I'm not mistaken, is just acquiring Zaitsev. They lost Jonathan Taves as a trade asset. He's done for the rest of the season. He's been dealing with a lot of uh, problems uh, physically um, ever since he got COVID. Um, Patrick Kane's on his way out. Domi, we don't know yet. Lafferty's on his way out. McCabe's on his way out. So the Chicago Blackhawks are probably maybe going to wait closer to the deadline to start making moves. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, New York Rangers are going to take out New Jersey in the first round is a given, especially with uh, Shesterkin rocking a sub. Um, 0.900 save percentage. I mean, we'll see what happens there, guys. We'll see what happens. The Rangers are on a skid right now. So hopefully they get back on track. That rhymed. <laughs> Max Domi's not getting moved. Yeah, maybe not. He's been a good fit with Chicago. Do you think Elias Pedersen will be traded to Toronto? That is definitely not happening. Uh, happening. Pedersen will be their future captain moving forward. Uh, and he's been lights out this season he's been the brightest spot of the vancouver canucks in a very very dark season so uh Pedersen does stay uh, no don't move to tar yeah 
I mean, he's he's been having a pretty good season this year, so maybe not. I am surprised this happened. Uh, I I mean, it's not really a big surprise for many. Uh, Meyer has been linked to the New Jersey Devils for the longest time, so I'm not surprised in terms of that. Uh, we're still awaiting uh, confirmation on the details, guys. Uh, <laughs> still nothing yet. Still nothing yet. Uh, while the yeah okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're moving nowhere, essentially, in terms of the details. Uh, Timo and Carlson, haha, <laughs> don't think that's possible. Yeah, I think only Timo moves. I think Eric Carlson's more of an off-season move, to be honest. Uh, Red, hi. Hi, guy. <laughs> Trey Nurse, Pulley RV, and a first for Carlson. Uh, I mean, that's pretty crazy. Maybe it works. I don't know. <laughs> but Nurse is signed to a, a crazy long deal, too. A lot of people say it's a bad deal. So, I mean, we'll see what happens there. What was the ter- the the Timo return? We're still awaiting that, guys. But guys, if you are still uh, waiting and tuned in, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And uh, we have a lot of uh, NHL trade deadline coverage coming up very soon. So uh, look out for that. And we did a lot of trade breakdowns as well. So keep an eye on that as well. TJ Miller to the Hurricanes. Yeah, that's a possibility, actually. Uh, the Hurricanes have inquired about Timo. Uh, sorry, Timo Meyer. Yes, of course, but that's out of the window. TJ Miller is a possibility as well. And if they want to trade him now, the Vancouver Canucks, now is the time because his new deal hasn't kicked in yet. So they're going to have to be waiting um, essentially till maybe the offseason to make that move, or maybe they could get this done now. And I don't think the Carolina Hurricanes mind too much on getting a guy like TJ uh, Miller. Uh, he's got close to an 100 point season last season, so he's fully capable of being a top six forward. Um, and I think he would be a great fit on the Carolina Hurricanes. And I think they could get him at a steal of a price in terms of trade value. He's not the best defensively. There's a lot of people that criticize his game defensively. So uh, I do believe that um, uh, he is better all offensively, like <laughs> immensely better offensively. So um, we'll see what happens there. Please not nurse. Yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere, guys. Uh, Pulley RV is a negative addition. Serious future considerations territory. Yeah, I think they, it, it might just be a contract dump at that point. I mean, there was talk about pull, putting Pulley RV on, uh, on waivers at one point. But I think uh, Ken Holland is trying his best not to let that happen. So we're going to see what happens there in terms of uh, Pulley RV. I think he gets traded on deadline day, if I'm not mistaken. I think the Jets getting Nino Niederreiter is an underrated trade to replace Cole Perfetti until he comes back from injury. Yeah, guys, we did a trade breakdown, and that's exactly what I said. If you guys want to check out that trade breakdown, uh, Cole Perfetti's out for a couple of weeks. He's probably not going to be back until playoff time, which is fine because at least they'll have him for playoff time. They're, they're going to be okay without him. And getting Nino Niederreiter for just a second round pick, what a steal. That's incredible. Like, he's such an underrated winger. He's probably one of the most underrated wingers in the league. A guy that deserves a lot of recognition. And he did a very good job with the Carolina Hurricanes. And uh, he had a very hard, uh, hot start with the Nashville Predators, but they're sellers this year. So they got rid of him and they only get a second. Uh, the Wild waste of $3 million in cap space for a playoff run. Uh, unfortunately, Kane and Breadman are going to reunite in New York. Yeah. I, so. The happiest guy in this situation is Artemi Panarin because he's getting his best friend in Tarasenko on his team and he's getting the guy who essentially made him into the player that he is, Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane was his line mate for the first couple of seasons when he was with the Chicago Blackhawks, one of the best duos at the time, and they were electrifying together. And imagine seeing them on the power play together, all three of them. Wow, that would be wild. <laughs> wow, LeBron just tweeted Brock Besser's headed to the New York Rangers. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. Are you guys messing around with me? <laughs> uh, sounds like Scott Harrington is going to the New Jersey Devils along with Timo Meyer. So Scott Harrington is a part of the deal, guys. Uh, he's a defenseman that was signed by the San Jose Sharks during the offseason. So Scott Harrington and Timo Meyer head to New Jersey and 50% is retained for Timo Meyer. But we're still awaiting what New Jersey gave up. We're still awaiting on what's happening there. 
where i mean the details are slowly coming out and i know you guys are getting impatient i'm getting impatient we're like come on guys let's get this deal happening but uh yeah yeah uh <laughs> we're still waiting guys we had a hell of a time to beat columbus today uh, yeah, I think you, you meant the hard time. Yeah, Columbus won again. I think that's two wins in a row for Columbus. They've been winning a lot of games. I don't know what's going on with the bottom tier teams recently. Uh, I know at one point, uh, this, the Arizona Coyotes were on a nine-point game streak. Uh, the bunch of Canadians are winning games. Chicago's on a five-game winning streak. The Ducks, I think they're on a two-game winning streak. The Columbus Blue Jackets are on a two-game winning streak. It's getting really crazy right now in terms of... Uh, the war for Bedard. I feel, I feel like no one wants to uh, get Bedard at this point at the uh, at this rate, essentially. And I know Batman made a comment saying there's no tanking in this league. And I mean, right before he said that, everyone was tanking. And as soon as he started saying, as as soon as that statement came out, all these teams have been winning all of a sudden. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Batman pulled some strings. San Jose trying to trade Mark Edwards Velasic. Yeah, that's a contract they're going to have to get rid of uh, very soon because he's up there in age and uh, might as well, I mean, maybe he does them a favor and he, he just retires. So, you know, that cap hit is off the books for San Jose, but I think he does not want to retire, unfortunately. What team is best fit for Bedard and deserves him more? Well, we did a, um, a video on Connor Bedard in terms of where he should go and what's the best fit for him. Uh, basically it was right during the, uh, the world junior, um, tournament. Uh, so late December, it was a fantastic video. got like over 4k views, a lot of different opinions, uh, Montreal, uh, the ducks. A lot of people said no to Chicago because of the whole scandal last year. Seeing they're not deserving of that. And they already had a dynasty, um, with Kane and Taves and all, uh, the whole gang there. Um, so, I mean, I think the one that deserves them the most is probably Columbus. I can't imagine uh, them not getting him. Uh, but Dard, Gujo, and Liney, Liney on the first line, wow, that would be one of the best lines in the league. And Gujo and Liney need that uh, badly. <laughs> I mean, Columbus needs that. And I think the Columbus Blue Jackets fan base is very underrated and they are dying for a superstar like that. Antoine, not real. Uh, lies. San Jose is not trading uh, Velasic. He has no move clause. and doesn't want to be moved. Yeah, like I was saying before, uh, I don't think he gets moved. We're not doing anything at deadline. The Wild, uh, no, our playoff run is four to seven games, and that's it. I mean, Bill Guerin said that they were going to be active heading into the deadline. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens there. Uh, do you think the Predators trade uh, players like Dante Fabro? Yeah, actually, Fabro has been uh, placed on the trade bait list heading into the um, um, the trade deadline. And apparently, San Jose is very interested in adding Dante Fabro. They got rid of Ryan Merkley, who was one of their top prospects. It didn't work out with him. And they're very thin in terms of uh, defensive prospects. So adding a guy like Fabro, who hasn't been working out in Nashville, I think that could be a uh, great fit. Kaprizov Hattie against Columbus. Yeah. Yeah, he got a Hattie. Uh, Le, LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Is it LeBlanc or La Bank? Or I don't know. I was saying it in the French way, guys, because I, I am located in Montreal, so I'm saying LeBlanc, but I think it's La Bank or La Banque, or I don't know. Uh, Sabres lock up second wild card spot with their win today. Do they uh, make moves before the trade deadline? If the trade makes sense for the Buffalo Sabres, they will do it. They have the cap space. They have the assets. And Alex Tuck is week to week. So that clears up more cap space for them. So I definitely believe that's a possibility for them in terms of making a move. I mean, I think they were going to make a move regardless of Alex Tuck's injury. But um, we are still awaiting you know, what's going on with the Buffalo Sabres. They've been linked to, like, basically everybody. Chikrin, Carlson, Timo Meyer. Uh, I think they're going to be active. They're going to make a surprising move come trade deadline. Uh, there will there will be no top players left by trade deadline. Teams will get desperate. Josh Anderson will be for sure out there. He was playing it smart. I love Josh, but time to sell high. Uh, yeah, he signed to um, 
a long-term contract. I think he's getting paid $5 million or $5.5 million for the next couple of seasons. He's having a pretty good season. He's going to hit the 20-goal plateau probably for the second time in his career, if I'm mistaken. I think the first time was with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always like this every trade deadline, that a lot of these players get dealt um, before the actual deadline date. And then they're just leftover scraps or maybe like one or two pieces that, you know, were waited upon until the very end. Uh, so, I mean, we'll see what happens there. But we're at the one hour mark. We have 326 viewers. Thank you so much, guys. Let's continue to get the ball rolling here. So as of right now, we know that Scott Harrington, a defenseman of the San Jose Sharks, and Timo Meyer are headed to the... Uh, New Jersey Devils. And it's really weird that Scott Harrington is part of this deal because they have so many good defensemen and they have Luke Hughes and Nemich in the prospect pool. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe another defenseman heads to San Jose. We'll see what happens. Yo, Jake Paul just got knocked out. It's about time. He had it coming. <laughs> Laban to Montreal. <laughs> More like Leblanc. Louis Leblanc. Mercer probably going to San Jose. Uh, no, Angelo. Unfortunately, there's, it's been reported that he's not being uh, uh, traded there. Uh, San Jose. San Jose wanted Mercer badly. Well, that's not the case. It's not happening. I hope they keep Mercer. He's in, yeah, guys, he's not going anywhere, guys. Mercer is staying with the um, with the New Jersey Devils. He's not going anywhere, guys. Don't uh, don't panic. Please, we have a lot of young players. We need Josh for the rebuild. He's not getting traded. I mean, I know Kent Hughes said that he likes a lot of the veterans on the team. I think guys like Mike Matheson are going to stay on the team moving forward. Uh, Mike Hoffman's going to stay. He's been doing pretty well with the, the Habs recently, even though a lot of fans are saying trade him, trade him, trade him. I don't think there's a desire right now. Uh, in terms of other teams wanting to acquire a guy like Mike Hoffman, especially uh, he has term on his deal. I think Mike Hoffman probably gets traded next year when he's on the last year of his contract, uh, but not this season. Unless teams get desperate, because like uh, someone said in the comment section below that um, not a lot of these top players are going to be left come trade deadline time. What if M Meyer does not sign an extension with the Devils? Ha ha ha, would be epic. Uh, I mean, the goal is to sign him to an extension. That's what New Jersey wants. But I think that's going to be done during the offseason. Uh, do you think the Habs make another trade? Yeah, 100%. I do believe they make another trade. What do they do exactly? Uh, there's rumors about Jonathan Drouin, who's an UFA. Sean Monaghan's health is up in the air. No one knows what's going on with him. So he could be traded. Uh, we're still waiting on that uh joel edmondson is back he's traveling with the team uh to their california trip so i think he gets traded uh danilov got traded today uh for garyanov which i think was an absolute fleece for the canadians 25 years old uh former first round pick uh, 12th overall six for three very fast uh the Montreal Canadiens have been very good with their uh their 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 prospect development uh, ever since they uh, hired Martin St. Louis as their coach and they got um Kent Hughes as their GM and Jeff Gordon as their president. It would suck to lose uh Mercer. Uh, that's not happening. How does New Jersey top six rank now? Meyer, Heischer, Mercer, Tatar, Hughes, uh, Brat. That is a very fast and skilled top six. Yeah, or maybe Tatar finds himself on the third line. So, I mean, looking at it here, uh, Sharon Govich is on the top six right now, uh, along with the other guys. I mean, it's crazy how Palat's playing as a third line winger when he was a top six forward uh, with the Tampa Bay Lightning for so long. And when they signed him, I'm pretty sure they expected him to be a top uh, six winger, but that's not been the case, unfortunately. And we're still waiting on the news. I think we got... No. <laughs> yeah, so here's Scott Harrington acquired by the New Jersey Devils. Just a depth defenseman. This is Jay Fresh's report, as you can see, uh, in terms of his statistics. We're still waiting on this deal. But if you guys want to take a look at Timo Meyer's uh, stats, go right ahead. Uh, yeah. Let's continue to answer more questions here. Uh, thumbs up to Red. I love Laban. Yeah. 
He's an underrated player, but I think he needs a change of scenery. Who did they give up? We're still waiting on a trade return. Let's give them Hala. Yeah, Eric Hala. Um, they traded him. Uh, aw- uh, they traded for him, and they traded uh, Pavel Zaka. He's been a fantastic fit, Zaka, with Boston Bruins. He got an extension, and uh, he needed a change of scenery. He got one. Uh, Hala. He's an experienced forward. Um, and the Boston Bruins got younger with Zaka, so it was a good deal for them in terms of Hala. Experience, veteran, depth forward, whatever you want to call him. But I mean, that's a piece that could be dealt as well. And uh, if I'm mistaken, he's a UFA at the end of the season. So many juicy first round matchups shaping up. Let's go. Yeah, it's going to be a fun um, uh, playoffs. And we're going to be doing a lot of uh, um, versus episodes. So basically, every playoff matchup, we will break down like we did last year and basically give our thoughts and analysis on which team is the better team and how many games we think um, that series goes to. And uh, it was a hit for us last year. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to take a look at our past videos, take a look on our channel and subscribe to our channel. Uh, yeah, we'd love to give them Hala. Yeah. I think a lot of Devils fans want to get rid of Hala. Meyer and Scott Harrington. Yeah. Those are the two guys right now going to New Jersey, Harrington and Meyer. Yeah. Uh, we know the deal as of right now. Like everyone's saying in the in the chat, uh, Harrington and Timo Meyer are going to uh, the Devils. Fifty percent of Timo Meyer's contract is being eaten up. Uh, did they give up Mercer? Nope, they're not giving up Mercer. It's up on Sportsnet. No Mercer. Yeah, Mercer is not part of the deal. Yeah, good. Uh, who is going to San Jose? We're still waiting, unfortunately. Huge L for Nashville next year's second is a joke of a return. Yeah. I was expecting a lot better for Nino Niederreiter. That was an absolute steal of a trade for um, <laughs> the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Cole Perfetti's out for the next couple of weeks. So, I mean, there's no surprise there that they wanted secondary scoring. But they wanted secondary scoring before Cole Perfetti was injured. So maybe they add another uh, winger. Oilers need to redo their D. This is not their year again. I would not let Holland sell their future. I don't trust them to do well in a trade. I mean, you know, there's been this whole debate with who's the better GM. Is it Shirelli? Um, is it Holland? I think they've both done bad things. And they've both done good things. And honestly, you know, it's very, very strange what's happening with, with the Edmonton Oilers. And they're going to have to do something big because they're wasting Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl's uh, career right now. And if they're not going to win with the Devils, they're going to win elsewhere. And I'm not saying they're going to get traded because that's going to cost a boatload. But uh, yeah, Uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. But uh, I know the Edmonton Oilers fan base is very upset with how things are going. Very underwhelming uh, season. Leaf should trade Matthews for a fourth. <laughs> well, look, he, Matthews has been dealing with uh, injuries this year. He hasn't been having the best season. This is by far his worst season. Uh, Alexander Nylander and um, and uh, Mitch Marner have been playing way better than him. And uh, I mean, look, as long as Matthews is good for the playoffs and he gets back on track and he's consistent and he's healthy and the Leafs pass the first round, that's all that matters. Uh, best trade steal of this year. Uh, I mean, we're still waiting for the, the trade return, so I don't know if it's a steal yet, but Timo Meyer going to New Jersey is what they needed. Uh, the Brad Pack came on a couple of um, days ago to talk about the New Jersey Devil uh, trade targets. You guys could take a look at that. But, um, yeah, he said it's Timo Meyer or bust, and essentially they get their guy in Timo Meyer. Uh, who's going to the Sharks? Still waiting on that. Sharon Govich, possibility. Which defenseman should the Senators target? There's been talks about Mackenzie Weger. There's been talks about Matt Dumba. There's been talks about Perry Aiko. Honestly, I think all of them are fine. They have the assets um, to get it done with for any of those defensemen. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, maybe they might get Jacob Churkin. That's a possibility as well. Um, I don't know what happens, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of good defensemen available uh, for this Ottawa Senators. And that's the one thing I would like to say is that all the wingers are being traded before the deadline, but all the defensemen 
are still available, at least the top ones. The only one that was available that got traded was Orlov and Mikola. So, I mean, uh, I mean, I do believe that they're below guys like Chikrin and um, and uh, Mackenzie Weger, but I mean, Orlov is very underrated. Fantastic, hard, heavy, def- uh, hard, heavy hitting defenseman uh, gets the job done. Uh, championship pedigree, won the Stanley Cup with the uh, with the New Jersey Devils. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the Washington Capitals. My bad. We're talking about New Jersey so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, Good friend of Alexander Ovechkin, so you know that must have hurt for him. But maybe uh, you know he resigns with Washington during the off season. We'll see what happens there. I would assume Holtz. I think that's what it's going to end up being at this point. Uh, team was under contract uh, for the rest of the season, yes, and he's an RFA. So the good thing about this deal is that New Jersey owns uh, their uh, his rights essentially. So that's very good news for the New Jersey Devils in terms of uh, contract negotiations. Um, let's continue here. Rangers are going to win the cup. I mean, they're getting all these great pieces. So, I mean, it's a very strong possibility, but they need to wake up because they're on a losing uh, streak right now. So, I mean, I'm hoping for the best for them. And I hope that, you know, they start getting their crap together, and hopefully uh, Kane helps them get their crap together. Yeah, it's probably holds one more player and picks. Uh, yeah, that's a possibility. A wild one. Oh, wild one. Okay, yeah, because they were losing at one point, like 2-0. So good comeback for the Minnesota Wild. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. I thought they uh, <laughs> they lost, but uh, I'm guessing with Kaprizov getting a hat trick and single-handedly um, <laughs> causing this comeback and getting an OT win, uh, that's fantastic for Minnesota. A mu- uh, like a, a must win game for sure. For sure, for sure. Especially with what's going on in the West with Calgary, uh, you know, being up and down right now and very inconsistent. They're going to be fighting till the end. Calgary and uh, Minnesota, that's for sure. Uh, maybe even Seattle. They've been uh, slipping a little bit recently. Uh, okay. Timo will sign a nice big contract, but I think he signs for less than his qualifying, so less than $10 million. I mean, I know he was looking for like $9 million plus at one point, which is ludicrous if you ask me. I would not do that if... Um, I mean, yeah, I would do that, but like, I mean, after you jeopardize signing Jesper Bratt, like, what do you do with Jesper Bratt after, you know, like... You're going to have to move some salary out. You know, Damon Severson, okay, he's gone. Eric Hall has gone. They're going to have a, a lot of UFAs. But, like, you know, you're know, you you're going to want to maintain this team uh, as much as possible because, you know, the New Jersey Devils are doing really good with this team. But there's some players that will definitely be gone, that's for sure. Uh, right, tanking is not real. Hi, everyone. The Ducks. I'm guessing you're talking about uh, Bedard. John Gibson needs out of Inaham. Uh, oh my God. You guys are going to crucify me with the way I just pronounced that. The Ducks. Okay, let's keep it at that. The Ducks. If we were able, uh, if he were to be a penguin, that would be insane. I would move Jari in a first in a heartbeat. All Jari has shown is that he's injury prone. But so has John Gibson. John Gibson has been uh, very injury prone too. So, I mean, uh, two injured goalies. Jari's going to be a UFA, I think, at the end of the season. So, you know. Yeah, Sharon Govich hasn't been notified that he's a part of the trade. So, Sharon Govich is not being traded either. <laughs> Man, it seems like no one's being traded. I think they got Timo Meyer and Scott Harrington for free at this point. But John Gibson, I would say that uh, he would be a good fit for the LA Kings. They, they need a goalie if they want to go far into the playoffs. Um, yeah, that would be a good fit for them, but, uh, I don't know. They're not going to trade in the same state of California. <laughs> Highly doubt that happens. They traded Holton and Sutherland. No, they didn't. Uh, it's not confirmed yet. Penguins are toast. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're slipping. Uh, official still waiting. Even if he retires with some of cap stays. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. I thought some of the salary cap didn't. Uh, get affected by a retired player. But thank you for correcting me on that, Jersey Hockey. I appreciate it. He's going to Chicago. Bedard, maybe. There's a possibility. 
that was not getting anyone uh, anywhere uh, or any, anyone. I don't think they're getting anyone, honestly. Dawson's staying, please. Yeah, Dawson Mercer is staying. Uh, the details, no one yet agreed. Really hope we keep Mercer. Guys, like we saw many of you guys said in the chat, and I'm and, I, and I've stated before, Mercer is not going anywhere. He's staying in New Jersey, so there's no need um, to freak out about that. Uh, Devils might make a good run. I mean, they're having a great season, so why not? I see them making a good run. Don't think Fitzgerald would do it. Yeah, they they won't. Uh, I don't see it making sense to trade Mercer for Meyer. Yeah, that's not happening, guys. Uh, Holtz, I think Holtz is going to be part of this deal at the end of the day. He's the only one that's not been notified yet if he's been traded or not. Uh, Sharon Govich has been notified that he's not been traded. Uh, Sutherland was notified that he's not being traded. Uh, Dawson Mercer. So, good trade for us. Yeah. I mean, getting Tim Myers and upgrade on, on, on guys like Sharon Govich and Thomas Tatar, that's for sure. And playing with with Jack Hughes, who's having a fantastic season. Wow. Beautiful. All teams linked to players. Yeah. Every year in terms of the trade deadline, you always have teams like uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs linked to uh, every single player. This year, the New Jersey Devils were linked to a lot of teams. Uh, the Hurricanes. Every year, there's always that one team that's linked to everybody. Uh, if he stays, yes. Wow. Devils made a great deal. Uh, source on that. Guys, There's there's no confirmation yet on what san jose got uh for yeah from new jersey we're still waiting wait what are the rumors on who was traded to and from new jersey for so as of right now like i i was re alluding, uh, repeating before uh timo meyer scott harrington to new jersey 50 percent retained on timo meyer we don't know what's going back to san jose we don't know why it's taking so long <laughs> It's like over an hour, guys, that we're here. So um, I'm really hoping that they're going to complete this call soon because <laughs> I think we all have somewhere to be right now. But I'm having a fun time with you guys, and I really appreciate you guys, all 325 of you guys uh, tuning in and being a part of the experience. This is very exciting for the New Jersey Devils fan base and also for San Jose in terms of what they get in return. Hopefully, it's a big return. And it's fun just to see big blockbuster trades happen like this all the time. Um, we need more um, trades like this because uh, the NBA probably has – the best trade deadline, in my opinion. There's always blockbuster trades every single year. And I think it's because they don't have a salary cap. I think that's what's killing the NHL, salary cap. Um, we're going to have so much offense for depth for this playoff run. Yeah, that's for sure. McCabe is going to the Leaves and uh, Lost in Kraus. Yeah, there was talks about that. I think Nick Schmaltz could be a good possibility for the Carolina Hurricanes. There's been talks about him uh, being uh, traded to the Hurricanes. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, so excited, but Lawson Cross, he's another guy could be moved. We'll see what happens there. If New Jersey Devils has a D man coming in, could be Graves or Severson going the other way. Yeah, that's what me and the Brad Pack were talking about uh, last time. Uh, Graves and uh, and Severson would have to be a part of a, a deal if they're gonna wanna, you know acquire a guy like Timo Meyer and resign him and Jesper Bratt. You know, those guys, they're going to have to make cap space. It's all about cap space. Jesus loves us all. Yes, he does. Bruins rebuild is going to take forever. They, need, they have no picks or prospects. Yeah, but they're in win now mode and they're going to be building around the guys like Marchand and Zaka and um, the Brusque, McAvoy. You know, they still have a very good team. All Mark, Swayman, yeah, it's probably the end of uh, Bergeron and uh, Krejci, but they still have a, a, a good enough pieces to compete for years to come. And yeah, I'm aware that um, I'm aware that uh, Marshawn is up there in age as well, but they're still going to be a competitive team. Uh, they're not in the same spot as the Washington Capitals and Pittsburgh Penguins. That's for sure. Uh, I concur. <laughs> Montreal bottom feeders. Yeah, I mean, they're... They're, they're probably one of the best bottom feeder teams the way that they've been playing recently, but yeah, definitely at the bottom. Uh, probably Severson. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Could be Severson holds first, Muck and Cassie. We'll see. Please be Severson. He's such a defensive liability. I mean, he's been.
part of trade rumors for the longest time. I know people were saying that uh, <laughs> JT Miller would be traded for Severson one on one during the off season, but um, that's not gonna happen <laughs> anymore. That's for sure. Uh, th- that's right, Carla. Uh, do you think he's playing Wednesday? Timo Meyer? Yeah, I think he should be fine for for Wednesday. I mean, it's only Sunday, guys. Uh, thanks, Curry. Uh, you, David Safard getting traded. Yeah, that's a possibility. People have been saying that he's been having a pretty underrated season. Uh, he could be a guy that's dealt, but again, Kent Hughes said that he likes the veteranship in Montreal. They don't want to really tinker with that too much, but maybe it's part of the strategy. Maybe it's part of him trying to lure in teams to buy, uh, players from his team. You know, Kent Hughes is good with twisting things around and uh, getting his way. And he's been deemed the fleece master recently. So (laughs) we'll see what happens there. Um, Let's continue taking more questions here. Uh, Harrington is probably to fill an AHL roster spot. Sharks probably got a D-man prospect. That's not Hughes or Nemich. I think Harrington will be part of the New Jersey Devils um, because I do believe a defenseman is heading the other way. That's what I believe. That, that's for sure. Um, uh, let's see here. Plus, Severson's cap hit is too high. Have uh, a third pairing, third pairing, but he's not good enough to be in the top four. Yeah, maybe. And Nemich is coming in too, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Palat, third line. That's a possibility as well. Um, but I highly doubt it happens. You know, he's been in, he's supposed to be in the top six right now. But we'll see what happens uh, in terms of that. Mid-grade Devils. Uh, I'm hoping it's something like Holtz, uh, a first and a KHL prospect. Um, yeah, maybe. Johansson, Holtz, and a first. I mean, they did put Johansson on on uh, on waivers. So maybe he's a throw-in. Thoughts on Kane? Patrick Kane, he's going to be with the New York Rangers. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a fantastic move for them. I do believe that, uh, you know, they're going to be so dangerous offensively. Um, And, you know, (laughs) I do believe that um, he's going to make them one of the deadliest teams. I really do. But Kane is not going to resign, that's for sure. And they have leverage because Kane has a no movement clause, so he chooses where he wants to go. Uh, do the levels make any other moves besides the Meyer trade before the deadline? Nope, I don't think so. They didn't really have to make any moves to begin with, but adding Timo Meyer is a fantastic move, and it's the only move. And Jesper, uh, sorry, the Brat Pack, who is a big Jesper Brat fan, <laughs> uh, he said that it's Timo Meyer or bust. I know it's confirmed, but it would be interesting to throw a ball in the trade. Maybe. Um, San Jose is looking for Sharon Govich uh, and Holtz and a first. Uh, I don't think Sharon Govich is part of the deal. Honestly, guys, I don't think that's happening. Hoping nobody on the trade back end aside from Severson is a part of the deal. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they take Carlson too. <laughs> Uh, Zach, uh, Zach went to Boston, not Washington, or did I mishear that? Uh, yeah, we've been talking about a lot of things here. Uh, we've been th- covering a lot of trade rumors heading to the deadline. I, I said Zach was going, I went to Boston uh, in the deal, but if I wasn't mistaken, I apologize. But uh, and thank you for correcting me. But I'm pretty sure I said Zach to Boston uh, before. Career year for Team Mo, and it's a contract year. Yeah, he's gonna want a lot of money. That's for sure. Fitzgerald is the best. I actually put up a poll at the beginning of the year um, saying that uh, Fitzgerald uh, could p- potentially win the, um, the ja- <laughs> not the Jack Adams award. That's for the best coach, but the award for the best general manager. And a lot of people were saying like, no, that's not going to happen. And I guess I did a pretty good job at, uh, at, um, at predicting that. That's for sure. Big news out of Nashville while Trotz returns. Yeah. He's going to be the general manager of the uh, the Preds as of June 30th when David Poley steps down. And he's going to be part of the um, Nashville Predators rebuild, essentially. Does this trade likely push the Devils past the Canes in the standings before the year is over? 
yeah, I, I would say it is. I, I I would say it is. Honestly, I think that's the right move unless the Car the Carolina Hurricanes add somebody. Jackets should try to get Patty Kane. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh, Matthews plays the worst in the playoffs. Maybe he turns it up. We'll see what happens there. I'm still awaiting trade news <laughs> in terms of Debo Meyer. I think we all are. Uh, Sabres need to trade for a D-man at the deadline. Maybe. But, I mean, they've link been linked to Chikrin. They've been linked to Carlson. Uh, anything is possible. Full trade Meyer and Harrington for Mer first Mercer and Sharangovich and a second. I think that trade steal comment was asking you what you think was the biggest steal so far. I could be wrong. The biggest steal so far... I mean, it really depends, honestly, uh, on what happens. Uh, I do believe that the biggest steal was <laughs> Nino Nino Rider because they got rid of a they only they got a second round pick for him. So I do believe that that's a possibility um, as a candidate so far. Uh, I know a lot of people were saying like, "Oh, Ryan O'Reilly, that deal and everything is going to be um, a steal for them." Honestly speaking. Uh, I think it was a fair deal for both sides. They got exactly what they wanted. Ryan O'Reilly is not Nick Foligno, that's for sure. Um, he's been playing fantastic with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They, they're on a winning streak, and um, so I don't see that. Tarasenko, I would say the way that he's been playing lately hasn't been great, and even with Mikola. So, I mean, maybe that's a steal for the St. Louis Blues on what they got as a return for Tarasenko. Um, it, it's it all depends how you look at it, but. At the end of the day, we could only talk about this when we reach playoff time. If we see that none of these big players uh, do anything uh, significantly uh, heading into the playoffs and they get eliminated in the first round or something, then, yeah, I believe that that's definitely going to determine what's a steal and what's not a steal. And also, what the teams do with the draft picks. Who do they draft? That's another thing that determines who wins the trade. So it's kind of too early right now. Uh, Smith, <laughs> there's no way Mercer isn't going anywhere. Yeah, we spoke about it. Do uh, Sabres pull the trigger on a stay at home D man, McCabe coming home? I think McCabe did play with the Sabres before. Maybe he goes back. I don't know. Uh, honestly, that's that, that's pretty interesting. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the Sabres do. They're kind of like, uh, they don't really need to make a move because, uh, they're doing, you know well enough without um, trading for anybody. But Alex Tuck is out for the next couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and they have a lot of prospects coming up that are going to be part of the, the team moving forward. So um, I do believe that that's a guy to also look out for as well in terms of, um, you know, what they do moving forward. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, why would Kane go to a garbage jackets? <laughs> Maybe he signs uh, a ludicrous deal with them during the offseason if Bedard's there. <laughs> Bedard, Goudreau, Line, and Kane. That sounds about right to me. Now, Rangers are going to lose to the Devils. Oh, look who has joined us. Our co-host. Back from Boston. Luca. He's connecting. So, we'll see what happens. There he is. It's popping. Luca. We have over 300, uh, 320 people watching. How do you feel about that? So many questions. <laughs> yeah, sorry. My bad, guys. Uh, if you haven't seen me in the last couple of episodes, uh, listen, I was out of town and I missed a lot of trades. So I actually just ended up coming back about 10 minutes ago. So, so um, yeah, so I, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I just <laughs> I got the trade on my phone, actually. So it's pretty crazy. It's actually pretty crazy. All of it's just kind of changed up, but like it's funny because the trade happened. The trade was supposed to happen like what two, two hours ago. This trade was supposed to happen like, weeks ago, Luca. <laughs> no, the I know, but like the trade like ago. actually got announced officially. Like, yeah, I know, but it got officially announced like two days, two like like two hours ago. It officially like was confirmed that he was heading to the Devils, and now like you know we haven't heard anything. Uh, 
Ange, Ange just put Luca. Are you coming to hockey tonight? Unfortunately, Ange, I'm not. Um, I uh, I have to go to hockey I tonight, think, so uh, I think Luca's gonna have to be uh, taking over around seven o'clock. I told Gino that I couldn't make it because I thought I was gonna get home late, but it's <laughs> it's too late, and I'm tired anyways, and whatever. So I'll just <laughs> I'll probably take over for Chris. Uh, if he leaves and the trade doesn't yeah, get yeah around, around seven uh, o'clock you're gonna take over unless you know there's nothing that happens but is Kate yeah. and New York Rangers confirmed or just talks Luca it's confirmed. This it's, one confirmed. It, it's confirmed I mean listen guys uh, they they announced that uh, they're basically just uh, moving down players until uh, they can essentially uh make the money work they need about i believe it's 2.2 million for it to to work because there's a rumor that apparently a third team's involved in order to retain 25 percent of patrick kane's contract um i believe that that's the montreal canadians personally but i mean we'll see what happens there but i do believe that by wednesday we're going to get a resolution on this kane thing he will uh, end up um on it what did darren jagger just say per- perusing the list of players in play JVR slides in. Oh, okay. Yeah, JVR is going to be the most demanded player at this point in terms of wingers or forwards or whatever. Centers, wingers, whatever. The whole shebang. Uh, What's interesting about New Jersey, and just to kind of... I don't know if you talked about this, Chris. Honestly, I missed like pretty much the whole video, but just kind of my opinion on it. Um, I'd be very surprised if Holtz, uh, Makamadoulin, or even Seamus Casey aren't involved in this deal. Um, I think New Jersey probably gave up a lot for him. Um, it's a good move for the Devils. I think they add exactly what they need. Uh, he knows t- uh, t- uh, Nico Heischer very well. Um, they're Swiss buddies. So that's going to be good to, for him as well. Jack Hughes gets a winger that he gets to play with finally um, as well. And I think the Devils are, are one of those teams that they're going to be fun to watch. And uh, playing the, the Rangers likely in the first round is going to be a very interesting contest between the two teams for sure. Yeah, and um, honestly, like we're st- we've been waiting so long. I don't know what what what's what's the holdup here on uh, you know Timo Meyer being traded to the uh, to New Jersey Devils. We all know what is heading to New Jersey. We don't know what's heading back the other way. And you know, there's been a, you know we've been having a good time here with all these questions to, uh, leading up to the trade deadline, guys. We're gonna be going live on the trade deadline with a couple of friends of ours. We have Bruins Media. We have the Wind Column, who c- uh, cover the Calgary Flames. Um, we have uh, Puck Media or Puck Wave. I forgot their name. They're going to be joining us too. So we're basically assembling the Avengers of hockey um, <laughs> analysts on uh, on YouTube and on Instagram. We're basically well at the rate we're going. There's going to be no trades on deadline. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's what a lot of people are saying. Guys, we're currently at 1.54k. Let's try to hit to 1.6k. So, guys, if you haven't subscribed already, yeah, please, please subscribe. Do, We're please on do. a very good path of hitting 2k by our, our two-year anniversary, which is sometime in end of August, if I'm Actually, mistaken. So, yeah. so yeah. But let's answer I, more questions here because I think we're behind. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking hold Sharangovich a first and a second. Listen, um, I don't know. I think I I like Sharangovich. I'm a big Sharangovich guy. Um, I wouldn't want to see New Jersey trade him, but listen, at some point you're going to have to give up players. I think that's a good package. Holtz, Sharon Govich, a first and a second sounds about right uh, for what uh, Timo Meyer would would go for. Um, I think that's a good move. I think, you know, what's funny though, too, is, and I know that we're kind of going off topic a little bit too, but, um, you know, look at the the, the prospect that Ivan Barbashev faced, uh, fetched, right, in the earlier trade this morning. Um you know, he's a guy that was a former first round pick and that, you know, uh, he was he was drafted in the first round, uh, never hasn't really pl- hasn't played in the NHL yet, but is a promising prospect. That's kind of what the return is going to be uh, for uh, Timo Meyer. And obviously Holtz feels fits kind of what Zach Dean is. Uh, obviously, Holtz is better. But in, in terms of the prospect, that's probably the type of prospect that I'm expecting in terms of a roster player. I mean. I've heard rumors of Andreas Janssen because he makes $3 million a year and the Devils want to shed some cap space. That could be a possibility if he ends up going back the other way. A first-round pick is for sure included in this. Um, I don't think uh, there's a, uh, a doubt about that. Um, I think it's just a matter of what the prospect is going to be. You know, There was rumors that it was going to be Dawson Mercer. I don't believe that it's going to be Dawson Mercer. I believe that it's probably going to be, uh, like I said, either Seamus Casey, uh, Shakir Makamadoulin, or uh, Alex Holtz. 
Um, and look, I mean, at this point, it's a waiting game, but like, I don't know what's taking so long or why the Meyer deal hasn't been officially announced. Um, it's been like three hours, so it's it's a bit weird, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, Loki hope ball isn't involved, like some people have speculated, love him too much. I mean, honestly, everyone's speculating everybody being a part of this deal. Who knows? So, Jack Hughes might get traded. <laughs> yeah, okay, don't say that. People are gonna start thinking you're actually serious about that. Uh, just for Brad is. <laughs> just for Brad is better than Timo Meyer. Yeah, I don't think the Brad Pack would no. approve of that. No, well, no, just for Brad's not better than than um, Timo Meyer. I'm sorry, not not the... look. The other thing too is actually they were talking about it before, um, and I was reading up on it while I was in the car driving back from uh, Boston because I was actually in Boston this weekend. Um, so. Uh, just talking about a little bit, obviously there's no extension um, on Timo Meyer currently. Now, what I think is probably going to happen is that it's probably going to be what, what Bo Horvat did, which is essentially a situation where um, he didn't sign a, he, he didn't sign a deal right away, but he ended up um, essentially signing one afterwards. Um, and so that's, that's what I think is going to be the move in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm excited to see what the return is for Meyer. It is getting long. I know that they said that it's 50% retained. So that's $3 million. And then Scott Harrington, I believe, also going to New Jersey. Uh, so we're just waiting for New Jersey's uh, side of the deal, essentially, or um, San o like what, what San Jose is going to receive, which I don't understand why it's taking so long. But anyways, it is what it is. Down downside for Jersey is I think it's qualifying offer is 10 mil. No way Jersey does that. Listen, they have cap space. Um, and to be honest, Timo Meyer is um, a very good player. Um, and I know that there's talks. Apparently, there was a rumor that they don't want to pay anybody more than Jack Hughes because Jack Hughes makes eight and they want Jack Hughes to be the most expensive player on the team. However, listen, in my opinion, with how good Timo Meyer has done, and he did it on a show. Guys, the Brad already. Pack is joining us very shortly. Now? Yeah. Oh, boy. Interesting. So. Yeah. So just to just to announce that a little bit, I mean, uh, I I look at Timo Meyer, and to be honest, it it allows me to essentially do something like that, uh, where it allows the Devils to do something like that in the sense where they can go ahead and and you know give a qualifying offer of ten million dollars. Um, in my opinion, honestly speaking, he's worth that anyways. So you're you're paying for a guy that's essentially worth that type of money. New Jersey's got the cap space to do it, like I said, and at the same time. Um, you know, you get a winger to play with Jack Hughes, and that's your your core for the next, you know, eight years essentially. If they sign him for eight years, okay. So, so this is crazy. Like so it. we're hearing that Chicago is working on a trade for Sam Lafferty. We're hearing that um, Adrian uh, Dater of the Colorado Avalanche, a reporter, he reported that uh, the Aves are interested in Sam uh, Bennett and in John Klimberg. So that is very yeah, very not, interesting. Yeah, also hearing I was kicking tires on Sam Bennett. Interesting. So there's there's a lot of uh, very interesting moves. Guys, like, oh, today is the trade deadline. <laughs> guys, guys, the thing is, how funny would it be, guys? On the on, I mean, listen, if we're on the show and there's a trade that breaks after we get the return from Meyer, we're just gonna cover it here because at this point we've already gone for an hour and forty two minutes. Might as well continue. There's no point in making a second video. Um, but we'll uh, see how that goes. Um, but in terms of this, I mean, look. I just why I don't understand why this deal is being held up. I'm I'm on Twitter on my. Well, end we so. have uh, Sheng Peng, a good friend of ours that came on the podcast last time. He says it's very weird. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, I was reading on my phone. To follow up on this, another source is suggesting that there might be a third team uh, trade happening with Meyer, and the NHL is making sure there's cap compliance uh, for all teams involved, which makes sense. We shall see. Oh my God! Holy crap, guys! Oh boy. Bro, I mean, I, mean, I think I'm going to be so gone. Much, like, so at seven getting, guys, guys, Montreal's, Montreal's getting Timo Meyer. That's what it is. Right? <laughs> I mean, at seven o'clock, I'm going to be gone. It's going to be you and uh, Brad Pack coming That's on. That's fine. That's fine. I have nowhere to go tonight. I was just, like I said, I just came back from Boston. So, uh, you aren't yeah. familiar with the Devils' cap? Uh, they have 36 million besides Brad. Meyer mostly small smaller signings. Yeah, that's exactly. That's why I said that they can do it. I mean, if if Timo Meyer, in my opinion, um, look, Brad Brad needs a contract at the end of the year, right? Um, and to me personally, based on everything that they that they did, I think they're going to re-sign him. If you take into consideration the fact that the Devils have a shit ton of cap space, anyways, um, 
if you take into consideration the Devils team, I mean, look, they're going to lose Andreas Janssen off the off the off the 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 contracts, right? He's not going to be there. Miles Wood makes 3.2 million. He's a UFA at the end of the year. Howla makes 2.3. He's a UFA at the end of the year. Sharon Govich probably gets an extension. McLeod gets an extension. Um, and then Bokvist. Well, I was reading somewhere that as of right now, they only have $2 million in cap space. So that's why they're going to have to move contracts around. Yeah, well, it's because they have $2 million in, con- in cap space currently. Yeah, that is true. Um, but the other thing, too, guys, you have to take into consideration, like I said, Janssen makes $2.2 million. Um, that's going to be off the books as of next year. Uh, he actually makes more, but he's currently buried, buried in the minors. That's why it's only a cap hit of 2.2. Jonathan Bernier, who's an LTIR, makes $4.1 million this year. So that's going to come off the books as well. Mackenzie Blackwood's an RFA. There's no guarantees New Jersey brings him back, especially with how good Schmidt's been. That's another $2 million off. The, so New Jersey's going to have the cap space to do it and uh, with Timo Meyer and with Jesper Brad. Obviously, they have to re-sign Ryan Graves and, and Damon Severson as well. There's rumors that Severson might actually get traded um, at some point. So I, I do see a potential uh, situation there um, with New Jersey. But listen, I, I don't have a doubt. They're going to sign Timo Meyer. They're probably going to re-sign Jesper Brad too. Um, but in my opinion, and I know Brad Pack's coming on, but if I had to get rid of someone, um, Jesper Brad's probably the guy that I get rid of for Timo Meyer. Uh, I wouldn't but, doubt if Bow's involved too, possibly. No way Timo's oh. worth $9 million a season. Don't think Ruff will like his defensive effort. He's a stickler for a two-way play. Listen... Timo Meyer is still young. He's 26 years old. In my opinion, with how good he's done in San Jose, to me personally, he's about a $9, $10 million player. That's the value that he is. That's how good he is. I know that points is not everything, but go look at the numbers that he's put up. I think that there's 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 no way he doesn't get at least $9 million. And the people that are saying that he's going to get late, less than $9 million, I'd be very surprised if he does get less than $9 million. If he does, then that's a steal for any team that does it. I know defensively he's probably not the best, but listen, he's a two-way forward. Um, you know, he's a guy that, in my opinion, has always played good hockey. And look, a lot of the times too, when it comes to his defensive effort, at least in the games that I've watched of San Jose, um, it, a lot of it has to do with the team in front of him. San Jose is not that good either, right? And so there's only so much you can do. And with how good Timo Meyer has been, um, you know, I don't think that that it, it's necessarily out of the ordinary to turn around and say, oh, my God, uh, he's wor- he's not worth, a, a, a f- you know, $9 million. So. Okay. To continue to take more questions. Oh, look who's here. The there Brad he Pack. Okay, the, yeah. So, hey. so Timo Meyer, you, you said it yourself last time <laughs> that it's Timo Meyer or bust. So what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, how are we doing, gentlemen? I see you guys have been on for a while now. How, how's everything been going? Uh, New Jersey Devil fans are impatient. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I just came back from Boston because I was out of town for the weekend, and uh, I just came back actually. And Chris was already live, so I just joined them a couple of minutes ago too. Um, and I mean, look, I've been waiting. I've been, I was on my phone like dri- as we were driving back, kind of like checking the trade to see like what was announced. Yeah. And so far, it doesn't seem like anything's been announced apart from Scott Harrington and the fact that uh, San Jose is retaining fifty percent, but. I wonder what New Jersey is going to trade. And obviously, we've been having this debate with the fans in the comments um, next to us. What's, what do you think the return is, uh, Brad Pack? You know, I honestly, what I thought it was, they, they've already kind of con- gone through the list of who it's not. There's a lot of process of elimination that's happening in Devil's fandom right now. I know a lot yeah. of the reporters are reaching out to agents and stuff. Um, so we've we've heard that it's not Mercer. Um they said, I think that they've heard that Holtz is not involved. Holtz would have been my number one, like yeah. centerpiece. That, and I think we talked about that when I, when I came on earlier this week, um, Holt, Holtz not being part of it is really changes everything there. Um, we've heard from Sharon Govich that he hasn't heard anything yet, um, which is another one that was, was very, very possible if they wanted a roster player. So there's a lot of things going around of people that it's not, so I, I am curious to see who it is. At this point, um, the first round pick is is a definite. It's got to be. We oh, got. We're gonna go for sorry it. To, sorry to interrupt, but Kevin, yeah. we just announced another trade, uh, not with the Devils, but Jack Johnson's going to uh, Colorado. So, anyways, continue. But just to say, yeah, yeah, no. So um, the first round pick is is definitely going to be part of it. So that you know is as good as gone. Um, we've heard it's not uh, Zetterland or Nemitz as well. Um, sorry, just reading the chat here as well. Yeah. Um, 
one name that I've heard uh, a fair amount that it could be is uh, Shakir Mukmadulin, who was yep. the Devils, one of our first round picks a couple years ago in the same draft as Dawson Mercer and Alex Holtz. Um, he, he's a name that I've heard a couple of times now of people saying that they think it's probably going to be him. Um, other than that, I, I really don't know who it could be because that covers the first round pick and that covers the prospect. But the rumor was that they wanted a roster player as well. And if it's not Zetterland, it's not Mercer, it's not Sharon Govich. Like, I don't really know who they're go- going for here. What'd you say? Well, um, I think Tatar. that they were saying that, yeah, it could be Thomas Tatar too. I mean, it could be. But one of the things too that they were saying, and actually I think Chris mentioned it before, but I think San Jose Hockey now as reporter Shen, Shen Peng said that potentially the reason why the deal hasn't been announced yet is because there's a third team involved, uh, potentially in terms of salary or whatever it is. Uh, so that's probably why maybe in terms of like, I know that we heard rumors that like you said, Sharon Govich, Zetterland haven't been informed, but maybe right. the question is that the reason that they haven't been informed yet is because like I said, there might be a third team involved in all of this and right. maybe they're, Maybe they just haven't essentially um, told them yet because the deal hasn't been fully finalized. However, I read that David Pagnota already said that Harrington and Meyer are aware that they're heading to New Jersey. So it's a bit okay. weird. But um, it's a bit weird. But at the same time, like, I mean, it is weird that, like, there's literally no update of anything that New Jersey is giving up yet. Like, all yeah. we know for sure. And, like, I mean, we can pretty much agree, all three of us and everyone in the comments, that a first round pick is getting involved in this. Besides yeah. that, I have no idea what's going on, like what's happening. I, I, I really don't know. Um, and, and it could be anything, but honestly, a lot of my worries were that Mercer might be involved. So, um, you know, him not being involved, I really can't think of anyone that they would give up. And that is even possible. Yeah. Cause you think about guys like Luke Hughes and it's like, it's, that's not possible. Luke Hughes was never on the table. You know, even Nemitz we, we expected was never going to be on the table. So, you know, Looking at guys that even realistically could be on the table, Mercer was probably like the borderline for me of it. So I'm really okay with whatever it is at this point. I mean, you know, knock on wood over here that I didn't just, you know, shoot myself in the foot by saying that when it's some <laughs> big, big ridiculous return. But I, I can't see myself not being happy with it. They upgraded where they had to upgrade. And I honestly trust Tom Fitzgerald at this point to to do what's in the best interest of the team i really don't see him really throwing out a wild package that would disappoint devils fans do you think he's a serious candidate now to win gm of the year you know i think he has to be i mean look at the team that he was given and i honestly i personally am a ray shiro fan i think a lot of the devil's fan base turned on ray shiro for reasons that they really shouldn't have i think lula morello left Ray Shiro in so much worse of a spot than anyone cares to admit. So I think Fitzgerald got some help uh, from Shiro coming in, but look at this team last year, 63 points. They're already way past that. And we still have 20, 25 games left or whatever it is. Um, Oh no, even more than that, 30 something. But um, they were in the basement last year. They're at the top of the league this year. He overhauled the defensive core, got, you know, addressed the goaltending issue upgraded the top six like what more could he have done you know (laughs) yeah and it's like you were saying before like barbashev domi all these options were not worth it like they don't really significantly change the team and if you want someone to take the the new jersey devils to the next step um it would have to be timo meyer right so right i'm totally you know happy that they finally got their guy and not only that but now they're in contention with the New York Islanders and New York Rangers for who has the biggest trade and who is the king of New York, essentially. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, even going into this trade deadline, all three team, I mean, two of the teams more than the third team, maybe we're, we're looking dangerous and looking towards a playoff push and stuff. But bringing in Tarasenko, Horvat, po- probably Kane and Meyer into an already like insane three team, you know, situation here. There's something special going on here. Like this is going to be the New York, New Jersey area is going to be insane for hockey for a little while now. Yeah. Well, Well, I think that that's going to, and I mean, look, you know, you look at a playoff series between the two teams, obviously like in my opinion, like you look at Patrick Kane being there, Tarasenko and stuff like that in New York now. um, And obviously with Timo Meyer going there, like, 
you know, obviously New Jersey, New York, and obviously the Islanders too. All three of them are currently in the playoff spot, which is actually really fun and makes it really cool too if you're if you're from that area. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting about all three of them is that they've all added, right? New Jersey's adding Meyer. Yeah. Uh, Islanders added Bo Horvat, um, and obviously the Rangers are on the verge of adding Patrick Kane as well. Um, so I think what makes it really interesting as well is that you know the all three teams like essentially. No, I mean not the Islanders, but like the the Devils and the, and the Rangers, in my opinion, like those are two teams that are really going for it, and they're sending a message. Like, I know New Jersey. New, I think the Rangers are more so in a situation where it's like they've got Kane and they've got Tarasenko, but those guys might just be rentals. So New, right. New York might just be going for it this year. Whereas if New Jersey gets Meyer, which they are, right, right. and they sign him to an extension, that's New Jersey saying we're not just going for it this year. We're going for it in three four uh, we're going potentially for, two, for eight three, four exactly essentially for eight years basically saying we're getting this guy not only for short term yes we're doing it this year but we're also trying to go for it in eight other years potentially after that as well and if they can keep yes for brad at a reasonable price too well that's a new jersey team that that is on the verge of potentially doing something special like you said so yeah. in my opinion like this is like a home run deal for new jersey one way or another so I, I yeah. think that no matter what, unless they gave up like Luke Hughes or Simon Nemich, like I I think there's no way like that New Jersey can can have a bad deal here in my yeah. opinion. And I'd also like to say that uh we've passed the 3.5k viewer uh mark. So thank oh, you nice. so much, guys. That's fantastic. Over 70 oh, yeah. views, and we Congrats. are at one point. 50k if i'm not mistaken so we're close to 1.6k so thank you so much guys so let's take a look at some more questions here uh okay. we have most of our main guys locked up on long-term friendly deals still have money to re-sign brat and meyer is it a possibility to sign both of them now yeah i mean we we, we talked about this when i came on earlier this week um you know my my main thing that i tried to say the whole time you know when, when we were talking was Fitz only does things that make sense for this team. And, you know, I didn't want to move that didn't make sense. And we talked about all this money coming off the books this off season. It's like, do you, these people, like, do you think that Fitz like didn't think about this before going for this trade? Like, of course he would not have done this unless he can execute his plan the way he has been trying this whole time. So he has the money. Um, we have the money. There's so much coming off the books this off season, guys like, you know, Wood, Tatar, Hala that don't necessarily need to be resigned or don't necessarily need raises or anything like that. There is enough money. They they can get both signed in that like eight, nine million dollar range. So it's absolutely doable. I personally think it does happen. I mean, obviously, until pen hits paper, anything can happen, but it, it's absolutely 100 percent, you know, doable. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I think for, like I was trying to explain that before is that like, I don't know, someone in the comments wrote that like New Jersey doesn't like have the cap space to do both. And I'm like, of course they do. They have like over 30 million as of next year, I believe. So yeah, 35. Uh, it's going to be like, they're going to be able to do more than just what they want to do essentially. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm, I'm excited. Severson possibly going. Uh, has anyone checked on Nemich or Hughes has been told? I doubt, I doubt it, but has anyone checked? Um, I believe the reporters have said Nemitz uh, is is uh, likely to not be a part of it. I don't know if it's like confirmed he's definitely not or what until we see. But I think they have checked in on Nemitz that he's they're not. And I I, th I don't think Hughes was ever a possibility. I don't think anyone even is considering it. Let's continue taking uh, Lucas and uh, Lucas and traded. Yeah, uh, Hughes isn't confirmed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jack uh, Hughes going to San Jose. <laughs> that would be that, that would bring home. I actually top. made a I actually made a joke about that. Like before I came out, I was like, guys, uh, did you guys know that uh, Jack Hughes got traded? And, yeah, and they're like, Bro, this would be good. Two firsts in Blackwood. I I don't think I'd be against that to be honest. If <laughs> if they came uh, two firsts in a Blackwood, actually, I think that might be the quickest. I would say yes because. I mean, with how Schmidt has been doing and Dawes coming up and even Tyler Brennan, in, you know, in the pipeline, I don't think Blackwood is a is 100 percent a necessity. And I think I think we talked about how he's not as bad as his stats have been. You know, he's just been getting really, really poor games um, in front of him. But I would 100 percent, you know, send him for Timo Meyer. Yeah, uh, well, I, I uh, don't know if the oh no, there was just a. 
<laughs> on Twitter. Someone said unofficial trade alert. Scott Harrington and Timo Meyer for uh, not Nemich, not Mercer, <laughs> maybe 2023 20, first round pick. So people are just trolling right now at this point. Yeah. Is, is it how guys, how funny would it be if this trade just doesn't happen tonight? Like it just <laughs> wow, we would have spent over two hours covering this deal with over 3.6. Well, you know what? At worst case, like listen, I, I'm gonna stay on as as like probably till like you know eight, eight, eight thirty, like nine. I don't I don't really have anywhere to go tonight, but like I'm just saying I'm not gonna stay here for like 12 hours. <laughs> but if this deal, if this deal doesn't get announced, and like as soon as I end the video afterwards. And yeah. this deal gets announced, I'm be very mad. <laughs> that's that's exactly what happened to me on the first day of free agency. Uh, you know, as we remember the whole Johnny Gaudreau thing. Well, he he signed with uh, Columbus at like 8 p.m. or so, and we did a Twitter space. Um, and we had you know so many listeners. We had so much fun. It was a group therapy session, and we went you know till nine, ten o'clock, whatever it was. Ended it. I went to bed. I was literally in bed. And my phone starts buzzing. And it was, you know, the Devils are signing Andre Palat. And I was like, oh, you know, all right, we got to get the Twitter space back going again. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ran into my kitchen because my fiance was literally sleeping at oh that point. God. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like in the kitchen, like with my phone on the charger being like, all right, guys, we got Andre Palat. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's great. So. I was talking about that before. Like he was, you know, meant to be a top six winger and he's playing on the third line right now. Like, I don't know how people are feeling about that. Andre Pilat? Yeah. He's been in the top six for most of the season. They they bumped him down to third just because um, the bottom six was having some trouble with production. And they, you know, just tossed him down there to see if he could get those guys going. And it's worked pretty well so far. So I don't think anyone has any complaints because he wasn't bumped down because of a lack of performance himself. It was really just to help out. Yeah. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> Taylor all bobbleheads from 2017, 2018. Uh, they probably have a ton. This is poor cat management. If you give him a nine plus, you're telling me Meyer is worth more than Ranton. And uh, you have Mercer Brat to resign. You need a goalie and top and uh, for sure your your D. What are your thoughts on that? I'm sorry. Can you throw that one back up? Yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> I mean, the 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 beauty of NHL contracts is. Of course, there's a market value and players will get compared to each other, you know, based on the numbers that they have. But you cannot go off of salary, you know, yeah. on how good a player is because, you know, what Jeff Skinner's at nine million. Are we saying and, and Jack Hughes is at eight million? Are we saying Jeff Skinner's better than Jack Hughes? Like, it's just not always how that works. There's a lot of moving parts that go into that. So I'm not going to, you know, really put too much stock into that. I, Meyer is the kind of guy that you do give 9 million to. I don't know how much over that I would go, but I, you know, between eight and nine is going to be around fair. So I, I'm not super worried about that. We have it in the budget. Uh, you know, it, it can happen. Yeah. Let's continue taking more questions. I'm probably going to go in the next couple of minutes. So it's just going to be you guys. Yeah. So I just, I just switched it to my Twitter account, Chris. You don't have to stress too much about like, you know, switching because it was under your screen at, at that point. So it's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. way, I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can hire this so like people can see it. But... So Logan Paul finally lost. That's that's, that's the biggest. <laughs> no, Jake Paul. Biggest Jake, news. Paul lost. Uh, Jake Paul. My bad. Whatever. They're all yeah. the same. Uh, uh, <laughs> Barry Trotz is apparently the new GM of Nashville. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, guys? That's insane. I did not see that coming. I mean, I mean, to be honest, like, not that I didn't see it coming, but like, I remember that uh, when he first wanted to leave, or when he did take his leave of absence, essentially, um, he basically said that he wanted to come back unless, like, it was for a coaching gig and a GM job or both. Um, one of the things that like I've I think is 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 actually very cool is the fact that he actually went back to Nashville. Um, I'm not necessarily surprised because I think at the end of the day, like, you know, he was known for his time as not in Nashville, essentially. So I do think that, you know, going back to Nashville where it essentially first started for him, you know, I think is, is really cool. And, you know, I think to take over from David Poyle, I think is, is cool as well. So I'm happy for him. Well, guys, I'm going to get going. 
Brad Pack and Luca will take care of you guys for the rest of the show. You guys will get a definite answer on what the package is heading to the San Jose Sharks. Hopefully. That's for oh. sure. We're not going oh, anywhere. Oh, unless no, it's tomorrow. Don't speak indefinite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless it's tomorrow, then there's no way. But uh, Luca and Brad Pack are going to be taking care of you guys. It was nice covering the basically two hours with you guys and they'll be answering more of your questions so if you guys have any questions in terms of trade proposals players that have been linked to teams that have yet to be traded they're going to be going down the list so make sure to do that also like this video and subscribe to our channel if, if you haven't already and i'll see you guys soon luca rat pack take it away yes awesome Thanks, bud. So yeah, so that's it because uh, well, we actually play on the the same hockey team, but uh, uh, I'm not going because I was too late. Anyways, not just the backstory <laughs> a little bit on it, but like basically, I like Missing left the game. Yeah, we have we have a game for hockey, but like I could I couldn't go because I was out of town and I thought that I wasn't gonna make it in time. And obviously, I'm tired too, so like I just <laughs> called that I wasn't going, and he's gonna go because he has to. So nice. Um, it's pretty good, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take over a little bit over here. So I'm trying to kind of fix my Twitter at the moment. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, okay, there. Does why is this not loading? I don't know what the fuck's going on. Technical difficulties on our end here. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Uh -oh. Did something there happen with Charlie McAvoy? I don't know. It's they're just they're just uh, you know Jay Fresh. He's always doing uh, he's just just throwing cards up. But I mean, in terms of that, I mean, uh, obviously, okay. Well, guys, we'll cover this a little bit, I guess, since we're waiting. Uh, England for Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson always seems to go to like these really good teams and like play well. I don't know if you noticed that Brad Pack or, or not, but like, I think yeah, the third time he's ended up going to Colorado and like, you know. Um, like I think he won he won a cup with them last uh, last year, so like I don't understand how this guy always gets a job. I don't think he's that good of a defenseman. It's just, <laughs> it's just funny too, because like you know this was announced literally two hours ago. Big trade alert: Timo Myers, New Jersey Devils. Steve Dangle's like, I'll have a video on tonight, and then actually <laughs> might not because <laughs> there's no yeah. trade happening. Anyways, yeah. we're gonna go back to take some comments a little bit for the moment. Uh, so I guess we'll just kind of see what there is. Here, the devil. Oh, I guess we'll go with this one. Devils get Timo Meyer in exchange for a first round pick and top prospect, TB Donaldson. <laughs> nice. Guys. nice. But it. yeah, so I think, like, you know what? I'll, I'll ask you some different questions, I guess, while we wait. And it, yeah. I think the questions that I'll ask you is more so a situation of, like, you know, obviously with Timo Meyer, I guess, obviously being the big piece and New Jersey doing that, do you think that if, like, after Timo Meyer, that, like, you know, that's it for New Jersey. Like they're not going to be making any more moves or you think that they could potentially be maybe in the market for, let's say another defenseman, maybe even a goalie. I know that, I know that technically speaking with, um, with Vanacek, he's played well, but obviously with Blackwood and his struggles this season, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of like, you know, the uncertainty around there. And I don't really know if New Jersey is confident with necessarily a situation of like, if Vanacek were to go down, that Akira Schmidt takes over, even though he's played well, I just don't think that, um, I don't know, I guess he'd be NHL ready or playoff ready, let's say for the devils. Right. Um, the series against the thing. So I just, I don't know about like, just kind of give me your thoughts on like, if, if, well, when the Timo Meyer trade goes through, do you think, you know, uh, Fitzgerald adds potentially a defenseman or insurance and net? Um, honestly, if they do anything else, it's going to be minor. I don't think they're going to, address anything major or make any more big splashes i think timo meyer was is really really the big one and and the one they've been chasing down for a while um you know it depends on what what holes there are with this trade i mean if they trade out a defenseman um you know someone mentioned severson like if they do trade severson and nemitz is not you know coming up this season yet he's not ready yet Maybe they do need to grab, you know, one more depth defenseman or something like that. I don't think it's going to be Severson. I, it just doesn't make sense to me, especially with what the Sharks are trying to do, because um, yeah. they're they're looking to rebuild. They don't want a, an, an old defenseman who needs a, a big contract now. So, um, you know, depends on what the holes that are left in the roster are. But you know, some minor tweaks maybe. But I wouldn't be surprised if Timo is the only one. And if there are any more, it's not going to be big. Okay. Yeah, so that's like I think that was more so like that that situation. Obviously, I, I look at New Jersey's cap uh, situation um, that I have in front of me. Obviously, you guys don't see it, but um, I look at the cap in front of me, and obviously, you know, it's still a little bit early where we're not even past the deadline yet. But you know, I, obviously, Jesper Bratt's going to get a new contract. Obviously, with Timo Meyer likely getting around nine million potentially more, 
Is yeah. there a possibility for a guy like, let's say, Miles Wood or even, you know, Igor Sharon Govich? Not necessarily getting traded. I know Sharon Govich has been rumored in Timo Meyer talks, but yeah. is there a possibility that essentially if these guys, you know, at the end of the season, if they're not traded or something, that Miles Wood comes back and, you know, what, what kind of contract would, would look like for him? And even Sharon Govich, uh, you know, he makes $2 million. He's an RFA with arbitration rights. If he's not thrown into this Meyer deal, do you think that, you know, New Jersey essentially tries to keep him? And, and how much do you think th those guys would cost, essentially, to kind yeah. of bring back? Yeah, um, I, I think they're very different cases. I think Sharon Govich has a, a much better chance of coming back than Miles Wood. I'd have to look at their qualifying offers. I think Woods is kind of high, actually. Um, Woods a UFA, I believe. Yeah, Miles Woods a UFA. Oh, okay. Um, so, I see Miles Wood as being a guy that we're just going to let walk. I don't see him getting traded. I don't think they're going to, um, you know, give up on him necessarily, you know, in the middle of this playoff push here. I don't think they're going to be selling, but I really don't see him with much of a future. He has not had a great season. He was injured all of last season and he's going to command enough money that it's really not, not worth it. I mean, if he's going to take a significant pay cut, cause I think he's making 3.2 this year. Um, yeah. If he's willing to take a pay cut to stick around, maybe, sure, I wouldn't, like, hate it. But if he wants the same or more, there's no way he's going to stick around. I, I think he's definitely going to walk. A guy like Sharon Govich, I think, is probably going to get something more in the range of, like, a three- or four-year deal at maybe three or four million. Um, I, I see him kind of getting these, like, mid-range, low-to-mid-money deals until he, it, you know, if he ever takes that next step, maybe he gets paid more. Um, but I, I think they'll keep him around, but I don't see it being, you know, he's not going to get an eight year deal or anything. And, uh, obviously there was the rumor at the beginning. I know you got, you talked about a little bit in the, in the previous episode about Josh Anderson and that whole rumor <laughs> that was going around. Yeah. Listen, I don't think New Jersey, obviously New Jersey is not getting, um, uh, Josh Anderson now, but it was just funny because there was actually like when the Habs did beat the devils. Um, everyone was like, oh, look, Josh Anderson's going to end up in New Jersey because that's exactly who they need. And it's just funny. Like, I'll be honest with you as a Habs fan, right, myself. Um, I don't think Josh Anderson's anything special, to be honest, right? No, I, it, it's like a it's like a running joke that yeah. he's worth anything. But that's exactly it. And it's just funny because, like, Montreal media here especially um, yeah. do believe that he's actually worth, like, a first-round pick and a high-end prospect. And yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I've heard rumors that apparently the Habs turned down a first-round pick for him, which, listen, I think, like, there's there's a market for every player in the league, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I don't think Josh Anderson is a bad player, but I think what happens is is that, you know, for, for the kind of production that he puts up, I think he's kind of overrated a little bit. And so that's yeah. why when they were talking about, like, New Jersey as a possibility, I was like, listen, I, I could see him in New Jersey. I really could. Like, as a player, I think he's he suits what they need. But yeah. I'm like, I don't think New Jersey's that crazy to go give up like a first round pick and a prospect for him like i i think yeah. if there's a market there for sure i think if new jersey was like you know what if we if we can do something that makes sense we'll do it but you know people were talking about like alex holtz at a first round pick and i'm like yeah it was, it was always crazy like, it's great and and isn't his contract pretty substantial yeah he's, he's making a like, lot of money he's making 5.5 for the next four years like yeah so that 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 like it's Tom true. Fitzgerald, and, and I've said this so many times, you know, when I've talked to you guys, so I'm sorry if I, you know, just repeat myself, but no, all good. Fit, Fitzgerald <laughs> has done such a good job at saying, this is my vision for the team. This is what I'm trying to do. Here's how that's going to work. And, you know, here's what I'm going to do about it. And so far, you know, with a couple, you know, obviously things don't go perfect all the time, but, you know, with a couple things falling through along the way, he has done a really good job of sticking to that plan. And, uh, you know, anchoring down with a guy like Anderson is just not part of his plan. So it's like from an outside looking in, not knowing about Tom Fitzgerald or his plans, I can see how like, oh, maybe that would work. But Devils fans knew that was never happening. It just it was just never going to happen. Yeah, that's 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 exactly it. Anyways, I'm just scrolling through the comments here. It looks like there's like a not a like an argument breaking down. Oh, is there something like, going on here? <laughs> yeah, between like I think it's like. Uh, the ra a Ranger fan and a Devils fan or something because like he's like oh uh, 1994 and then something to the effect of like he's been good for them and then not close to the Devils or some of that and basically they're like going back and forth I just realized this now like they're they're literally going back and forth they're like Rangers are no joke dude 
Yeah. And like, I guess they're just kind of going back and forth. So it's kind of cool to see Ranger fans and Devils fans um, uh, going at it. Obviously, you guys don't like each other. Makes sense. But yeah. um, just kind of your thoughts. Like, look, I know that you talked about it a little bit before, but like to me personally, New Jersey versus New York is like such a like big you know game, such a big yeah. rivalry game, and to have a seven game series potentially of New York versus the New Jersey with how good both teams are this year, like that's going to be crazy, man. Like it's exciting. It it definitely is exciting. And I think what, what makes it even crazier is the fact that it's like the Rangers, like, you know, loaded up in the sense where they got uh, Tarasenko, they got Patrick Kane uh, or they're going to get Patrick Kane. And then obviously New Jersey's got Timo Meyer. But I think if if we have to look at both rosters, right, I do think that, you know, the Rangers are roster wise, at least probably a little bit better than New Jersey, just because I think they've got everything like Shesterkin's insane. Their decor is fantastic. But I think with New Jersey, like what what's interesting about them is that they've kind of been that dark horse team this year where like, you know, people don't really know, like, like, I don't really know. Uh, how to describe New Jersey like they're really good and they're playing very good but like is this going to be one of those things where it's like this is just one of those one-off years or are they genuinely like hitting their stride and this is exactly what it is right because with the Rangers right. you kind of know what this is going to be right like they're they're a good team they're a powerhouse they were good last year they went all the way to the conference final just to lose to Tampa like right. we know what to expect right whereas New Jersey like Jack Hughes is finally finding his form Nico Heischer is playing fantastic hockey. Jesper Bratt's playing good. Vanacek's lights out. Um, mm-hmm. Right. Dougie Hamilton, we all know how good he's been. But the question really becomes, like, is this just a, a, kind of like a one-off year, right? Because at the beginning of the season, the Devils, you know, were struggling. And then everyone was like, oh, is, is Lindy Ruff really the, the, the guy for this team? And then all of a sudden, they started winning games. And obviously, they've added guys. But, like, I just – I look at the Rangers team, and I'm like – you know, there's something maybe potentially missing for New Jersey and not in terms to compete, but like that might maybe get them over the hump. I just want to kind of know your thoughts on that. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to be hitting uh, a, 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 an all time sports phenomenon where we're, you know, some people look at names on a paper and, and yeah, you know, you go on past performance versus now and moving forward and, these teams somehow like fall into these traps where people are like surprised when the younger, like lesser known team wins and looking at the Rangers, they have those names that, you know, Panarin, possibly Kane, Tarasenko, whatever, um, that you hear those names and you're like, Oh my God, they're so good. So successful. Cool. You know, big deal. And you look at the devil's roster and you see guys like Brat, you know, who don't have championships under their belt and are these young guys coming up. But I think that's where people kind of get lost in names because those guys are getting older and those names don't carry as much weight when, you know, they are getting older and start to yeah. kind of deteriorate a little bit. I, I know, I mean, I think Panarin has already kind of shown this season not, you know, as good as he normally is. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, it's one of those things where if the devils were to win that series, there'd be a lot of people surprised like, Oh my God, how'd they take down, you know, Patrick, the almighty Patrick Kane and whatever. And it's like, you mean 34 year old Patrick Kane that has a bad hip. Um, Yeah. So I I think it's very set up for that. Um, So I wouldn't be surprised. uh, You know, if we see, it's going to be a great series. Don't get me wrong. The the Rangers could absolutely win that series. It's kind of a toss up. Um, Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Devils do win. And I think we're going to get a lot of people across the country saying they are surprised and they really shouldn't be. You know what I mean? That's it. Anyways, just to kind of, uh, I mean, I showed it up before, but Tanner Janot, uh scratch for trade related reasons. That seems to be the new thing nowadays uh, where everyone's getting scratched for trade related reasons. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll kind of just talk about, I guess, trades that happened, I guess, today. And over the last couple of days, just to kind of like continue the episode, there hasn't really been any questions lately. There's just people fighting in the in the comments, essentially. So we'll just <laughs> I guess, talk to, talk about hockey. Obviously, the Habs made a move today, uh, traded that off for uh, Guriano, retained fifty percent. I yeah. like that move as a Habs fan personally. I think I like that, it a lot. Yeah, I think that listen, no matter what happens, like Guriano is a guy that in Dallas. Uh, you know, never really worked out. I think he's got a lot of upside, but the thing is, too, he's 25. I don't really know what his ceiling is, but if he can be a third line guy for for Montreal in the future, I could, you know, I could definitely be okay with that. I don't think that enough panned out here. I think it was just more so a situation of once the Habs traded him um, from Weber's contract, 
you know, they got they got a piece in return. They were hoping to get potentially something out of Dadunov. They ended up getting uh, Guriana, but I was hope they were hoping to potentially get more. But he didn't end up playing well enough, so it, unfortunately, it just ends up being Guriana. But I'll take it. I think Kent Hughes done a good job with that deal. Um, the one that I think was surprising, and I, I think you might agree with me on this, or you might not. Ivan Barbashev got traded for Zach Dean, and in my opinion, like is at least I don't know if you're if you're familiar with Barbashev uh, too much, but I don't think Barbashev's that good. Not that he's not that no. good, but it's more so a situation of like he shouldn't be worth a prospect like Zach Dean. Like to me, Zach Zach Dean's a top prospect, right? Like he's on any teams or on Vegas essentially, he would probably be like top two, top three, right, in terms of prospects. And you, you're trading a guy for Ivan Barbashev, who, to be honest. Like, yes, he's had good numbers in St. Louis. And I, you know, I look at, at his numbers. And I'm like, okay, he's good. And defensively, over the last couple of years, he was solid. This year, he hasn't really panned mm-hmm. out. But you know when, like, people overrate players? I feel like that's kind of what Barbashev is, where he's yeah. like, he's good, but, like, he's not that good, guys. Like, he's not like, <laughs> oh, my God, he's going to go and win you a cup type thing. Like, I look more so at, like, what the Bruins did with Garneth Hathaway and, and you know, Dimitri Orlov, right? Where... The Bruins got Garden Hathaway, who's just an absolute truck, and like in the playoffs is going to absolutely be exactly what the Bruins need. Whereas, like for Barbashev, it's not necessarily a thing of like Vegas not needing him, but it's more so a situation of like, th- does he really make Vegas that much better? Right? right. And the question really becomes, I don't think so. Like, if if don't get me wrong, if Vegas would have been like, hey, we're in on Timo Meyer, and they were right, they were top two, um, yeah, and they ended up acquiring Timo Meyer, we'd be having a different conversation right now. But at the same time, I look at Barbashev and I'm like, he doesn't thread that. Like to me, if I'm looking at a seven game series, right, in the Stanley Cup final, and it's Vegas versus the Rangers or Vegas versus New Jersey, like I'm taking the Eastern team any day of the week. Right? Oh, I think the Eastern's so much better in general. Yeah. That's it, and so like. Because of that, it's just a situation where it's like, well, you know what? Like, why, you know, like, yes, Vegas made that move. And obviously there isn't that many big names available unless Eric Carlson gets traded, which I'm not saying is going to happen, but it is possible. Anything's possible in this league anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I just, I looked at, like, today I was so confused when I saw the Barbashev chicks. I'm like, okay, yeah, but also, yeah. like. Vegas got fleeced. Like, in my opinion, if Zach Dean turns <laughs> into the player that they're supposed to turn that he's supposed to turn into, like right. he's gonna be a much better player than, than Barbashev, anyways. And obviously, being from Canada and watching the World Juniors, like Zach Dean was solid in the World Juniors. He was absolutely fantastic. Um, and he played very well, even if he didn't score that many points uh defensively and just you know, in the face-off dot, like he was very good uh, right. for, for Team Canada. So, like, I watched quite a bit of him, and obviously in the Q- QMJHL, he plays he you know, he's, he's been doing really well as well. So I, I look at him and I'm like, you know, I'm very surprised that a player of that type of caliber got traded for essentially a guy who's a top six forward, but you know, can be a top nine on some teams as well. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Barbashev to be honest. And that's kind of where it was. I'm going to try yeah. to see if the devil's announced anything. Or I don't think so. You probably would have gotten a notification on your phone. No, I mean, I, I full disclosure, I'm, I'm still scrolling Twitter while, while yeah. talking to you here. Uh, I, I know you understand. <laughs> I'm, so I'm doing the same thing like yeah. on my phone and on this. So like, you know, just to kind of yeah. figure it out. Apparently, they're saying Tanner Janot. Well, Ellie Freeman said, I'm not sure exactly where this is going to go, but it sounds like TB has made a pitch for Tanner Janot. Look, I, I I just find it funny that I think we've seen more trades today than than we have than we're probably going to see on deadline. There's going to be nothing left for the deadline. Um, and to just to touch on Barbashev real quick, um, a a lot of people when trades like this happen look at point totals and stuff. Yeah. And I think the most valuable thing that you can look at sometimes is the shot percentage. Yep. Because a guy like Barbashev, is he putting up points? Yes, but he's also shooting at like twenty four percent which, you know, is not sustainable. It's not going to continue. Yeah. And it's not even close to his career average. So when when we look at these evaluations of these guys and these trades, you got to look at how they're shooting compared to, you know, their career averages because most guys, their averages stay about the same. Like, you can get better, you can get worse, but, you know, the law of large numbers absolutely applies to these guys over the course of their careers where – if you got a guy coming out shooting 25% and you think that he's going to put up these numbers the whole time he's with you, you're going to get burned because when he starts slowing down, you just gave up a top prospect for him. So I I think overpaying for Barbashev, I don't, I mean, I don't think Zach Dean is necessarily 
on the highest end of the prospect pool. So I don't hate it necessarily, but I just don't think it's necessary. I don't think Vegas really gains much by having yeah. Barbashev on the team. Uh, that's exactly it. And I like, I think, you know, to me, what was very interesting too, is that, you know, I look at a team like Carolina, right. Who were also in on Timo Meyer, and like, you know, to me, when I first saw the rumors of Timo Meyer, the three teams that I thought for sure would have made a, a lot of sense for him was obviously the Rangers, obviously the Devils, and Carolina. And I think that the problem with Carolina, at least from what I read, was that they didn't want to give uh, Meyer or they wanted an extension with Meyer. Um, and I don't think that uh, they necessarily could come to an agreement or San Jose didn't want. Whereas right. with New Jersey, they were like, hey, listen, like we'll take him for now. I, I personally believe, and I said it before, um, that if the Devils do, when they get Timo Meyer, like it's probably going to be a Bo Horvat situation where they're probably going to call, call his agent and say, listen, let's work out a deal. Oh, get yeah. This sign. Yeah. Let's just like, you know, let's just 100%. get this over, over and done with because, like, at the end of the day, like, I know that when they say, oh, like, you know, we give extensions on, like, kind of what Kachuk happened, the thing that happened with Kachuk last year, right? Where, like, Essentially speaking, he got he got traded, but it was basically a sign and trade. Whereas, right. like here right. in this situation, like they don't really need to do a sign and trade. It's more so like, okay, we'll just I guess trade him, and uh, yeah. you guys can deal with it afterwards. Where it's like, you know, get him on the roster, and we'll work from there. He's still RFA. Right. Um, you know, even if he if he like is dead set on getting his qualifying offer and negotiating next year, like it's not a rental. He's not walking this summer, so. I, I'm really not worried about it. All, all the reports that have come out have said that he would love to play for the Devils um, long term. He's got Nico with him. Um, he's got Siegenthaler with him. They got the little, you know, Swiss Army going. Um, yeah. I'm really not worried about it. And like I said, I, I really do trust Tom Fitzgerald in his vision and his plan that he's executing. Uh, he's been very very firm towards it. And if he didn't believe that it was a non-issue, then I'm not worried about it. Let me just ask you because I brought up uh, Scott Harrington over here just on the on the like our little uh, board here that we're doing or just a little thing that we're doing. So I brought up Scott Harrington. I, I don't know if you're familiar with his game that much, but like just in your thoughts, just seeing you know him being thrown into the deal as well, uh, is he going to be a, a guy that I think starts in in New Jersey? Is he going to be like a depth guy that's probably going to be seventh or eighth defenseman, or do you think that they potentially just send him back to Utica? Um, and he'll help them out over there. What do you, what do you yeah. like? What are your, what are your familiarities a little bit with Scott Harrington and, and kind of your thoughts on him being included as well? I, I don't know what the idea was in throwing him in, in the trade. I don't know if San Jose just want to get rid of him or if yeah. Tom Fitzgerald sees something in him that, you know, maybe he thinks he could work with it, it. It just seems like kind of a throw in. I don't think there's really much value there. Um, yeah. The only thing that makes me, think about the return is if they have this fringe 7d you know coming back it makes me think maybe um kevin ball or nikita ohaituk um on the devils are, are going to san jose because that would be an immediate fill you know maybe we downgrade a little bit in depth defense um so yeah. that it makes me think that one of those guys are going um because there's really no other reason other than just, you know, maybe trading for another a AHL player. Yeah. And and I think the other thing too, and I, I wanted to ask your, your opinion on this. I thought about it before. So obviously we heard rumors that San Jose was interested in goaltending, right? That they had people, uh, that they had James Reimer, but that they weren't sure. Is there a possibility that one of Akira Schmidt or potentially Nico Dawes gets thrown into this deal for Timo Meyer? Obviously we heard rumors that, like I said, San Jose wanted a goaltender. Um, and, you know, obviously Dawes has been doing well in Utica. Schmidt's been doing well now. Um, you know, they've both done really, really well. So just kind of right. your thoughts on, like, do you see that potentially happening? Or do you think more so a situation of, like, where uh, Fitzgerald's like, no, you know what, I want to keep my two young goaltenders because I'm still yeah. not 100% sure about Vanacek? Or is he right. so convinced in the sense where, okay, Vanacek's, I think, proven to us that he can be a starter in this league and, you know, he'll kind of take us to the to where we want to go. Yeah, you know what? Anything's possible. It is – I'm not going to say it's not possible that, uh, you know, yeah. Schmidt or, or Dawes is included in this, but I haven't – really heard anything concrete that would indicate that they are and i feel like you know when you're trading a goalie especially in the, the situation that new jersey's been in for the last few years with their goaltending 
there would like I feel like there would just be a little more smoke before there's fire. Um, and I, we just haven't seen that. So it, it, it is possible. I don't see Fitzgerald doing it. I don't think, you know, Vanacek is playing well. And even I think, you know, we've talked about this before. I think Blackwood is still competent. I think he's capable, even if he's not having a great season. So, you know, we have it, but it's been so temperamental and so like hot and cold. Like, do we have it? Do we not have it? That I really don't see if it's taking any risks in terms of getting rid of a prospect especially Schmidt, who has looked absolutely amazing this season. He's under two goals against average. He's over yeah. 925 save percentage in 10 games. Like, that's not really the kind of guy you give, you know, even for Timo Meyer, like, there, it's it's not that I wouldn't give him up for Timo Meyer. It's that we have so much that I don't think it's necessary. Like, there's just so many other ways that I wouldn't, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think, like, like that that makes sense for sure too and obviously like i was i was just throwing it out there because obviously we were talking about prospects right and sure. i completely forgot that they have two really good goalie prospects as well that are playing well so that could have been a possibility but like i'm i'm looking at this and like the, obviously i saw you tweet the other day actually that you didn't want to see dawson mercer get traded because apparently he's been playing really well um yeah. and he's actually been solid i i would be very surprised if new jersey traded dawson mercer for T- timo meyer I uh, just yeah, because I, be I really, honest, really don't see it. Like, I just, I think to be honest, like if I look at everything here, right, um, and I look at their team, to be honest, I probably trade Alex Holtz before I trade Dawson Mercer. Hands down. Like, I, I think they wanted to. I think Holtz was absolutely part of the initial offer. It just sounds like San Jose really wasn't all that interested in him. So, uh, I, I, I think he's so much more optimal to give away as opposed to Dawson Mercer at this point. But I don't, I don't think San Jose. Yeah, you know, I don't think he really moved the needle with them, so that's what makes me so curious to see what they did give up because Holtz really does seem to be like the number one, like expendable but still has trade value kind of prospect. Where you know, a guy like Mercer would be like, No, 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 like we really can't lose him right now. So, if they didn't want Holtz, I'm, I'm really um, interested to see who they did want, and that can go one of two ways. You know, it can go towards the oh, well, we want more, we want a guy like you know mercer or it can go the other way of you know like shakir mukmadulin is is rumored to be part of it again first round pick hasn't played in in uh the usa yet other than a couple ahl games last year but that's the kind of thing where if the sharks see him and they really like him and they think he has a lot of potential he's not a big name so a lot of fans will be really disappointed to hear that and and they'll think oh like cool whatever like it doesn't matter whatever and it's like the Sharks management may be like, oh, no, but like, you know, we really see something in him. We really wanted him. Um, but that would be the kind of situation where I think the Devils would like run away with that trade. Like people would like consider it an absolute fleece if if a guy like that was the centerpiece. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think like like, look, I'm a big I'm a big I like uh, Shakir Makamadouli. And I think he's I think he's a solid prospect. Um, you know, I wanted Montreal to draft him when when he was around that well around that time when he was when he was drafted, and obviously they didn't. Uh, he ended up going to New Jersey. But mm-hmm. I, uh, to be honest, I don't think to like like when when people were saying Nemish, I look to be honest, Simon Nemish and Luke Hughes are not getting moved. Like that's the two no, not. that no matter what happens, like that's guaranteed not happening. Everything else is still kind of up in the air, just because like to be honest. Anyone can get traded, to be honest. But, like, I don't see Dawson Mercer getting traded, so I would kind of push that out of the way. In my opinion, my mock trade, and I kind of said it before, but I'll say it again, I think Holtz is is probably the best asset you can trade in terms of the fact that, A, it hasn't really worked out for him in New Jersey, and I think a change of scenery could do him um, and the Devils uh, some good. But not only that, yeah. you're getting Timo Meyer, so it's not that, you know, you're, you're not you're essentially trading Holtz for a guy who's, way better and already right. you know ready and to he's go. already there yeah it. it's not potential it, it it's reality that's, that's exactly it so so yeah for sure i think i think to me it's holtz potentially and i i actually thought about this it could even be a situation where they go hey we'll we'll trade you sharon govich we'll trade you a holtz a first and then you know what? Maybe they throw in Andreas Janssen. I know that he's he's a UFA at the end of the year, so they don't need to. But just to kind of get rid of that cap, throw in Janssen yeah. in like a second rounder or something. And I think the Sharks may do it just because at the end of the day, Sharks have cap space. But not only that, New Jersey wants to get rid of 
of you know Janssen and if they can potentially add another player uh, between now and um, between now and Friday, they might. And I think by doing that, if you can move Janssen and just kind of get rid of that contract off the books or that cap hit off the books, I think it it makes it even better. So yeah. I'm just reading here. Ryan Ryan just said Nikita Tokyo has not been informed. He's been part of anything either. So. Yeah, well, I don't think anyone really has been. I feel like we would have known by now. Um, it's like yeah. such a weird balance of like being confirmed that you're not a part of the trade versus not being informed that you're part of it yet. Because like a guy like you know Ohoy Tuck, he could absolutely yeah. be part of it and just not informed yet. You know, but that's exactly it, and that's that's kind of my opinion on it. Where it's like, you know, there's a real possibility that like the players just haven't been contacted yet. Right. And right. like the reason I say that is because like technically speaking and like when Pierre Lebrun announced the deal, it was uh, pending a trade call. Right. Which technically means that uh, until the NHL doesn't approve the deal, right. It can get vetoed at any time. I don't think it will. I think Myers is going to be a devil 100%, but it's just yeah. more so a situation of like the reason why they probably haven't been informed is because the deal hasn't been officially concluded, right? So you're not going to call unless like, and I obviously we've heard like what San Jose is doing, right? Oh, okay. wait, just... hold on. Um, oh, Shayna from The Athletic uh, just tweeted out that a first rounder in Zetterland looked to be a part of the return. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know where. I... Uh, I'll just search up Zetterland. Or I'll just search up Meyer and see. Oh, probably come up just shout out that. to Shayna, by the way she kills it and like honestly she's gotten so many scoops like way before the national insi insiders and like i know she's already popular but she's also kind of like a hidden gem because yeah. you know she's not like a national insider but she's been killing it with that stuff and then she just put there's more to this please hold yeah yeah and you know what like i i all agree with you because i think she was the first one to break the tarasenko trade if i'm not mistaken Could i believe so I believe so. And, and I had seen I had seen that she did that. And like, you know, like a lot of credit to her, right? Because like you said, in, in terms of all the big names, like you see Friedman, LeBron, Dreger, all those guys. And then to see her kind of come in and just do that as well and break it, like break the news before everybody else, I think is, is good. And it's good for like journalism too, just because yeah. it's good to see different people do it at the end of the day, right? Right. Now, I guess we kind of already know the two parts, right? So I decided to put the eye emojis here. <laughs> What's your thoughts on, you know, so far what you see in terms of the first rounder in Zetterland? W did you want to lose Zetterland? Are you okay with potentially losing Zetterland? I, I like Zetterland, and I think he's going to be a good player. And I, I I was actually, you know, not to be a little bit of a hipster here, but I was actually, like, in on Zetterland, like, before a lot of people were. I said in a lot of my Twitter spaces, even last season, that he was going to get a roster spot this season and he was going to make the team and do well for us. And he has been. He is a good rookie. I think he's going to be a good player. I don't think he's going to be anywhere near what Timo Meyer is. So Absolutely. if he is, you know, draft pick in Zetterland is like the the main part so far. Like unless they throw in another main part, um, that's if, if that's point. like the centerpiece, I, I would do that trade 10 times out of 10. And I like Zetterland and I think he's great and there's nothing against him. But when you're upgrading, you know, sometimes you got to give up good to get great. And, Absolutely. you know, so I, I'd be very happy if Zetterland is the, uh, the, the main piece there. And then she also just tweeted out six minutes ago. I know that Janot was already like kind of confirmed, but Tanner Janot to Tampa seems to be happening. Like, it's just funny. We're, we're like, we're actually, we're actually dealing with like three trade. Well, the Jack Johnson trade isn't a big deal, but like, I'm saying like, it's going to be funny to see the Meyer deal, like details come through. And also the fact that, um, you know, potentially Tyler Janot is going to get traded while we're on the live stream too. So that's just kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, shout out to, to, uh, to Shayna, like you said. I'm actually very impressed. I don't follow uh, New York media that much. Obviously, lately now I have uh, because they've been like the headlines for the last like three weeks. Um, and I obviously I didn't I wasn't too familiar with Shayna. I didn't really like pay attention to her content before. And then I started looking at the fact that, you know, she started breaking trades and stuff. And I was like, oh, you know what? And that's why I just followed her now because I completely forgot that I didn't follow her. So I just yeah. gave her a, a follow now on Twitter. So I'll, I'll be sure to do that. But listen, I, I like Zetterlin too. I think from what I've seen this season in the times that I've watched the Devils, which hasn't been very many, uh, apart from the few games against the Canadians and, you know, a couple of games here and there. 
Um, I I like him. I think he's a he's a solid asset. Um, yeah. I think he's a player that I think would do well in San Jose. You know, he's a player that um, he's Swedish, which I think bends uh, blends in with a lot of what San Jose has. Obviously, their their top prospect is William Eklund. Um, they have Eric Carlson over there too, so he's got a familiarity there in terms of the Swedish connection. Plus, mm-hmm. not only that, like listen, he's played well in in the system in New Jersey. I think on a top six role. Um, not necessarily to replace Timo Meyer. I don't think you can replace that guy, but um, you know he can kind of come into his own and potentially turn into a guy that could be a 40, 50 point player in the NHL. And if he can do that and he can, you know, be that guy for San Jose, I think that's a decent return, even for um, for a player like Timo Meyer, right? Like that first round pick. Listen, it's magic beans, but it's probably going to be a high pick, um, considering the fact that New Jersey is going to make the playoffs and probably go far. So yeah, uh, we're talking probably twenty to thirty-two range around there. Right, right. would be where you're going to see that pick uh, be. And obviously, the draft's deep, and your San Jose is going to draft someone really well with that pick. But sure. I think the big the big deal at the end of the day is going to be okay. So they're going to get that player, and then they're getting Zetterlund, who has had a really good year, but the up like the upside's there, but we don't really know what his ceiling is. Is he gonna be a top, you know, a top six guy? Is he a top nine guy? What's his real ceiling? Right. right? We don't a hundred percent know. Um I think the expectation for him at the beginning, if I'm not mistaken, was that he was going to potentially be a good top nine guy for them. Which is a third you know, round pick. He's decent. You know but he was never meant to be Timo Meyer. Which is That's, the point, you know? Which is exactly the point, exactly. And so I think for, for for you know, San Jose, Zetterlin gets thrown into this deal. It's a good move for them. He's, like I said, no. third-line guy that I think can help them out, potentially place higher in the lineup. Um, and obviously with the rumor that Kevin LeBanc is going to get traded eventually too – um, that's also very that bodes well for a guy like Zetterlin because he gets an, it's more opportunity for him there. Right. Um, if if it's just Zetterlin a first and like a second, like I really hope Zetterlin yeah. is not the only piece. Not not to say that I want to do it again. I do. <laughs> like like you do right, but like yeah. I really hope that San Jose was smart about this in the sense where it wasn't just Zetterlin the first and like a second. Yeah, right? if they so. did that, that's a f- like absolute yeah. steal and a half. And like Tom Fitzgerald should win GM of the year tomorrow. I hope right? so. But like, if if that's the case, then like you know, yeah. that's just terrible business by yeah. the Sharks, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be disrespectful to to <laughs> Fabian Zetterlin, but you know, um, I don't mean to cut you off here. Um, I do have to run with with this yeah. stuff going on. Um, got some Devils fandom stuff I gotta get to now as oh, well. Good. Now that the return is out, um, but I just want to say thank you so much for having me on uh, to talk a little bit here. Yeah, no and uh, I'll be around, man. We'll uh, we'll get this going again soon. Yep, absolutely. Whenever you want, um, you're always welcome to come back on the podcast. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have yeah, a good no night. Problem. Ciao. So, guys, obviously, as you saw, Brat Pack um, joined us for a little bit. You saw a little bit of the return um, with Fabian Zetterlund. Um, I'm going to try to get through some comments here. I'm just going to wait for the final details to come out. Uh, like 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 Brad Pack said before, shout out to uh, Shayna for the um, for the break there on Zetterland. Uh, we're waiting for more. Um, I'm hoping that this doesn't um, become a longer process, just because you know we've been here for two and a half hours already. Um, I don't you know see the point in all of this. Um, hold up, but Zetterland, the first round pick, seems to be what it's going to be. Potentially more uh, coming. I want to kind of know your thoughts with the people that are in the comments uh, below right here. What's your thoughts on Zetterlin? Um, sorry, I've missed a lot of comments, guys. I really do apologize. So let me just kind of go up um, a little bit here. And it's bros flexing 70. Okay. okay. That's not important. Uh, you guys are you guys are just talking about nonsense. So no worries, guys. Do chit chat all you guys want. So. Uh, Jeff wrote, gonna miss Zets, okay? Uh, a first rounder for when? And I believe it's 2023, Ted. Uh, 2023 first rounder and Zetterland. Uh, likely more to come. Uh, well, I'm expecting more to come. But um, yeah, so so far, it's the trade is so far. Just to kind of break down for everybody that's still here. Um, it's going to be Timo Meyer for, uh, and Scott Harrington for Fabian's. Uh, uh, no, yeah. Timo Meyer and Scott Harrington. And 50% retained for Timo Meyer for Zetterlin than a first-round pick in 2023. That's what we know so far. 
Uh, what else is there? I told you guys it'd be similar in ret- at the return. Uh, Zets is a good player, a uh, good player possession and shot, but not a top, not a top six player. Okay. That's kind of what I figured is that I think he's more of a top nine guy than a top six. So I, I mean, I, that kind of sums up, I guess what I was saying and what Brad Pack was saying before. Uh, so absolutely uh, glad it's Zets over other players, but I'll miss him. I mean, I don't think he's the main piece in the return, but I mean, you know, if that's the if that's the main piece in the return, San Jose did it poorly, in my opinion, uh, just based on on that alone. Uh, I like this push for this year's cup, but let's be real. New Jersey is set up with some of the best young talent in the years for you. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at some of the talent that New Jersey have, like we talked about with Brad Pack, um, McCamadouline, Luke Hughes, Simon Nemich, just on defense, obviously uh, Oktakiuk as well, goaltending uh, Nico Dawes, and obviously Akira Schmid. Uh, they have Seamus Casey, I believe, as well. Um, and then on forward, obviously, Jack Hughes, uh, Nico Heischer being the two big names, Jesper Brad as well. Um, now they're acquiring Timo Meyer. They had Alex Holtz, Dawson Mercer. Um, so there's op- ob- obviously opportunities there in terms of the prospect. New Jersey's set. Uh, doesn't New Jersey have a bunch of expiring contracts? Yes, they do. And low cap hits. Yep. Um, and I think what's going to be interesting about those two those two things is that it actually makes it very interesting. Bolts are getting a second round pick. Okay. I'm just sorry, guys. I'm just going to check to see if there's anything... Uh, more than needs to be discussed. Doesn't look like it. Um, and also the yeah, the big names haven't said anything like like nothing from LeBron, nothing from Dreger, nothing from Friedman in regards to uh, this deal, which is a bit weird. But at the same time, like I don't know, maybe they're just trying to get all the information instead of one by one. Uh, so let's go back to the comments. Gonna miss Zetterlin, but if that's the only return, that's really good trade. True. Um, Uh, they that may be the only Ross that may be the only Ross player plus picks and prospects. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I figured it was going to be that you know it's going to be a Ross player plus picks and prospects, which is essentially just going to make that deal even bigger. Um, Devils are not a low cap situation. Okay, are you sure they aren't? Uh, okay, now people are going to pick a fight uh, with each other here. Do who do the Sharks get Zetterlin in the first round pick? Uh, so far, that's what the return seems to be, is that it's going to be Zetterlin in the first round pick, but there might there looks like there's going to be more to that deal. I don't think that that's the only two. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see, so stay tuned for that. Um, Timo is 50% retained. Yep, until next year. They have $4 million as of right now. That's what I said. Okay. Zetterlin is 23 years old and already better than Timo, to be honest. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Um, as a Sharks fan, I'm not. Sh- I hope it's not only Zetterlin. I don't think it's it's only Zetterlin. I believe there's more to this deal. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of I guess waiting and seeing what's gonna be. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking again to make sure that nothing else happened. I'm gonna just search up Meyer real quick, just to see what we have. There's more to this, so please hold. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, latest. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of the update. So kind of what I was saying before. So thank you, Mason, on Twitter for this. That's kind of the update for the trade right now. Uh, more to come, obviously. Just got informed that you, <laughs> Corey Crawford is not part of the trade. That's funny. Uh, okay, so so far, that's kind of all we got. Um as part of the package, which is interesting to say the least. Uh, so just in terms of that, so that's nice to see. Um, so we're actually, oh, wait. No, never mind. Nothing. Just talking about John Tavares. Uh, all right, cool. Nothing uh, there that's important. So let's go back to kind of the comments here. So you guys, you missed Scott Googling the definition of poverty. All right. What's all this? Scott Harrington still plays. Great role player, physical, good shot. Uh, not on special teams, but was expendable, a very likable player, so I'll miss him for that. Um, and I think the Sharks are going to get that. You know, they're going to, like you said, kind of everything that they need. Um, I think he's probably going to get an opportunity on the special teams in San Jose, if I'm not mistaken. I think he'll he'll probably get that opportunity, which is going to help them a lot, uh, Zetterlin. So I I do like that deal. And like like I was saying with Brad Pack in terms of um, in terms of of the deal, if it's just Zetterlin in the first round pick, that's an absolute steal for New Jersey. Uh, my name is Nidos. Is if it's just out of the first, that's a steal for New Jersey, most likely more for the Devils. I know absolutely. Uh, Scott Harrington still plays, I believe so. I mean, I knew that I, I think I knew him from the time in his time in Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, and I know he played for Columbus too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in- interesting, I guess. Uh, but yeah, no, I just showed you more cap space to the Rangers. The Rain- okay, all right, cool. Holy crap, guys, so many comments. Uh, no one is getting paid more than Jack. The plan is for Fitz. Cat Brax. Zetterlin is going to be a good top nine guy, plays with skill and like Hughes and with skill like Hughes really well too. Okay. Um, Brat would make more than Jack. That's not saying he's better. Jack just got signed to a great contract. That's true, but I don't think Brat gets more than Jack Hughes. I'd be very surprised if the Devils uh, signed him to that um, deal that was more than Jack Hughes just because at the end of the day, like, you know, there's uh, there's that opportunity. So we're, we're going to wait and see, you guys. We're still kind of in this waiting game um, with New Jersey, which – is very frustrating at the moment. I won't lie to you. Um, so you know, it's been uh, it's been great, and you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what that does and how to how to move forward from this. So Devils are trading to the Sharks as part of the uh, Timo Meyer deal. We're waiting on more. Um, I'm I'm sorry, guys, for not really like talking. I'm just trying to get more updates on this. Oh shit! Sorry, I closed my screen by accident. So just give me two seconds. There you go. Uh, so back to that. So um, I was going to say, okay, Zetterland needs to be more serious in the training room, but has huge potential. Uh, why do you say that, uh, Haku? Um, what's your reasoning behind Zetterland? Is there an attitude problem there uh, that I'm not aware of um, in terms of uh, Zetterland? So with San Jose retaining cash space, I wonder if Carlson is going to be traded. Um, probably. I mean, he could be. There was rumors that the Oilers were interested. There was rumors that Columbus... Uh, had show, had kicked tires. I I would love to see him in Buffalo. I think Buffalo would be a, such a sick move for Carlson. Um, I think he could be traded. The problem is I don't think there's a huge market for Carlson either. And he kind of decides where he goes. So I don't know what the plan is for San Jose there. Um, uh, I had plans to play some games and chill. Now I've spent the last year waiting on it. That's exactly it. N- N- Nito's too, bro. Like, I just want to go sleep. But unfortunately, I can't. Joaquin Person... Uh, Brad's agent is going to play, be playing hardball for AV. A- Do you guys think the Devils beat Boston now? Uh, it's tough. I think any team can beat any team in the playoffs. Uh, but to be honest, it, it, it's tough. The Bruins are really good. Um, you know, they, they acquired Orlov and, and Hathaway as well a couple of days ago. So uh, they improved their team a lot more. Olmark's been fantastic. Their decor is great. Their offense is, is, is loaded. Um, so I'm very happy about that. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what Boston does. But I think right now um, Boston's kind of the favorite. But it doesn't mean that I don't think any team can beat them. I think the Rangers have a very good team. Um, they can compete with the Bruins. And I think the Devils can compete with the Bruins as well. I think even Carolina can. So we'll see. It's going to be very interesting in the playoffs as to what's going to happen. Now we have Timo for leverage. <laughs> no one's beating Boston this year. I hate Boston. Uh, all right. right. Uh, this dude, this did cause me to find a channel, so maybe it's worth it. Haha. <laughs> Thank you, Nidos. And uh, obviously, if you haven't subscribed already, please do, guys. Um, I, you know, would we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we've been going live for about two hours and fifty-one minutes now. Um, we're waiting for the news on the Meyer trade, so hopefully, it comes out soon. Zetterlin with a change of, to his training plan is going to shoot up. Oh, okay, so you're saying that maybe it's a training. Uh, training issue, but uh, I don't really know. I think you're kind of in the unpopular there. I think a lot of people disagree, but I don't know. I don't know much about Fabian Zetterlin. Like I said, I don't watch the Devils as much, but I heard that you know he was liked, well liked by fans. So there's that. Uh, attitude is great. Ha- he's heavy, chubby set, and has rosy red cheeks. Lol. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see what else there is. God damn it, guys. Seems nothing seems to be going. There just doesn't seem to be any news. They don't want us to know, guys. They want us to stay up all night. Oh, wait. I oh, if there were bets on who would get the details first, Jay, Shana just hit it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Fantastic. Nothing though so far. Apologies for that little crazy opportunity. Um. So, guys, actually, let me ask you a question. Um. In regards to this, uh, for anyone that is still here and watching us. What was your guys' thoughts on the trades today, right? So Barbashev, uh, Dadanov being traded as well. Um, what were your guys' thoughts on those trades? Um, I'd love to hear your opinions on some of the trades that happened today. Um, just because, you know, we can start a conversation, I guess, for that. Um, did you like the Barbashev deal? Do you guys like the Dadanov or Garyanov deal? Kind of let me know a little bit um, in terms of that. 
Uh, Soccer Insider says, do you see David Savard or Christian Navarro getting traded? Savard, I don't think so, um, unless there's a really good return. I think any player can get traded on any at any time, to be honest. I don't really think – I think it's all about asking price and, and what you're willing to give up. Um, uh, as for Dvorak, I do see it. Um, I don't see it happening at the deadline. Um, but I do see a possibility where maybe the offseason he gets traded. Uh, so there's definitely that. Uh, Aiden Perron says, do you think Detroit will get the wild card spot? I'll be honest, I'm big on Buffalo. I think Buffalo is going to do it. I think Buffalo is going to make the playoffs. And I think that what's going to happen is New Jersey's, uh, Detroit's going to miss out. Um, the reason I think that is just because uh, with everything that's gone on in the East and how tight it is, I just don't think New- Detroit's got the, t- the team that's, I think, capable of being the playoffs. And I think Buffalo's playing really, really well right now. Um, I would say Buffalo probably gets the final wild card spot over Detroit. And I think the Islanders probably get it too, or maybe Pittsburgh. So that's just kind of my opinion. This reminds me of the problem Kadri had with his diet and training program when he was 23, 25 years old. Oh, really? So you, you're you actually very much f- uh, putting on this situation. Okay, interesting. I like I like this perspective, Haku. So uh, good to hear from, from different fans. Uh, Montreal wins. St. Louis took a win and nobody wins the Chicago, Colorado, Chicago trade. Um, I agree. Uh, Montreal definitely wins the deal in, in terms of Dadanov, but I think Dallas did well too. Look, Dadanov, um, for me personally, in the deal that was there, um, it just didn't work out in Montreal, but I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's going to get an opportunity in Dallas that hopefully he thrives under. He knows Peter DeBoer, so that helps. Um, I think that's going to be very interesting to see how that works. Um, so I'm excited, and, I, and I'm you know I like I like Gurianov. I heard he's a speedy winger anyway, so uh, I think he's exactly what St. Louis is going to be looking for in terms of that. So I'm excited to see what happens with that. Um, as for everything else, uh, St. Louis, I agree. They win 100% in this deal. I'm a big Zach Dean fan. I think Zach Dean is a big piece to the puzzle uh, for them. So absolutely 100% I agree uh, that this is going to be a big um, a big situation uh, for us, uh, for them in, in that situation. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited to see what, um, what Zach Dean turns out to be in the NHL level. Um, but I'm not a big fan of, of Ivan Barbashev, to be completely honest with you guys. Um, so let's, as we continue to wait for details, uh, Aiden Perron says he agrees with my take. Cool. That's great. Um, that and all, the stars get of getting that as a goal scorer and add some depth while agreeing on his Canadian kind of 25 year olds and young talent developed for the future. Agreed. Um, I don't know how much upside there is on Goryanov. Uh, You know, he struggled in Dallas a lot. He's a reclamation project, in my opinion. Uh, he's a guy that I think is going to find his groove in Montreal, hopefully. Um, but if he can be serviceable third-line guy, I, I know he's a 30-point, 40-point guy. I could see that being a situation. Uh, I could see that being a good return for the Canadians. Uh, do you see Tyler Batuzzi getting traded? Actually, no, I don't. Um, Elliot Freeman reported that actually Detroit's not looking to shop him anymore. Which is good. Um, I think for Detroit, look, they're in a playoff push. Uh, there's no need to move Tyler Bertuzzi. Um, he's a good player. I think he's a big. He he plays a big role for Detroit, anyways. Um, he's a good goal scorer, so a good 25, 30 goal guy for 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 them for sure. Um, so I don't see them moving them unless they're really not confident in making the playoffs, which I don't think. I think Detroit is, and they might even add at the deadline. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they potentially added a depth scorer to try to get in. Um, so no, I don't see Bertuzzi getting traded, but anything can happen between now and Friday. Uh, Dadanov is also a lot older, so he could start declining in the next couple of years. Yes. Um, he's already started the decline in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, you also have to take into consideration that, you know, he was playing well before. So because he was getting, uh, you know, because he was playing well before, I think Dallas believes that they can get the best out of him. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, they have him for 20 games plus the playoffs, right? So, um, I don't know if, if it's a long-term solution for that or not in Dallas. Um, I think the Avalanche are interested in John Klingers to me, though. He's overrated, not worth $7 million. He is overrated. Um, he's not worth $7 million, although he is on the Ducks. So you have to take that into consideration as well. However, John Klingler, in my opinion, has never really lived up to the hype. Um, and I think that he should have you know, done well. Um, and I think he should have left Dallas when he had the chance last year. And when he was uh, in trade rumors and then obviously decided not to. So, or Dallas decided not to trade him. So, I mean, sucks for him, I guess. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Gambler saying that's a Zedlin's rumor and a first round pick could be more. I hope it's more. I really do hope it's more. Um, because or else uh, that's going to be a very big waste of time. Um, 
Soccer Insiders, uh, the Red Wings need to get Dylan Larkin to resign the offseason. Uh, yes, they do. Um, but I think at that point, you explore Bertuzzi and other options at a later date, to be honest. The trade is on hold. Yes, I know. Um, just give me the final verdict, please. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, give all of us the final verdict, actually. Guys, just a sponsor. Uh, Prime. I don't know if you guys... Um, sorry. Obviously, you guys know what the brand is, but I, I bought some, so I decided to try it out. Uh, True, I see Guriadov as long, more long-term and dotted off more short-term. Exactly. At Montreal, I think they, they probably see a bigger picture there for Guriadov, whereas Dadanov, I think, is just a rental for Dallas. I don't think he resides. Unless he does really well, then he might. But I don't think he'll get $5 million. Um, uh, to be honest, he's worth $2.5 million from what he's done anyways this season. So... It, it does make sense, and it, it, it added up for both teams. So I was kind of happy with that deal. Where do you think Gavrikov ends up? Now, this is a very good question. Um, I like this question a lot. And the reason I like this question a lot is because, technically speaking, he was supposed to go to Boston, right? That was the rumor. That was the deal. Now, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at Edmonton. I think Edmonton, to me, probably makes the most sense. Um, they need a defenseman like him. You know, I don't. Maybe he still ends up in Boston. There's a possibility that that happens too. But oh man, I just I think he probably ends up in Edmonton, Edmonton or Toronto. But I don't think Toronto is going to pay that big of an asking price for Gavrikov. So I'm going to go Edmonton in my opinion. Um, Edmonton needs to make a move. They need to bolster their defense. The best way to do it is is um, is by doing that. So uh, that's kind of my opinion on it. It's not a done deal. Interesting. Slight hang up, I believe, but as far as I know, no reason to panic. So, Elliot's uh, hair has been on fire because there's a lot going on. And let's start with the biggest fish to follow. That's Timo Meyer, three time 30 goal scorer, 31 goals this year. He's leaving the Sharks and going to the Devils, the newest New Jersey double. What can you tell us, Elliot? Look, there's a, I think there's a little bit of a hang-up here. I, I think one of – it sounds like there's an injury concern that's just – Oh. Not the final deal. Um, I, I, I don't want to guess on the name, just in case that – But it's a done deal? No, it's not a done deal. I think that because – like what, what I was told is that I think there's one player who's a little bit banged up that's involved in this. So they're, I think they're trying to sort their way through it. All right, hopefully that'll get interesting, started. interesting, interesting. That's an inch. I don't know if you guys heard that, um, but if you did, um, that's very interesting, actually, um, to kind of see that and, and hear that. Uh, wow, okay, so th there, there is a hold up in the deal because they're apparently one of the players that's interested is, is uh, that they're interested in moving is is injured. That could be Zetterlin, that could be somebody else. Wow, okay, so we'll see if there's a deal actually that gets done tonight. Um, I will take the Leafs seriously if they go after Lafferty. Um, I mean, he's a player that I think the Leafs would absolutely need. Um, you know, he's a good third line guy, fourth line guy. I don't, I don't see a problem there. Uh, absolutely. I uh, could see Capocacco involved in a trade for Patrick Kane between the Rangers. Yeah, but uh, the problem with the Kane deal is that he has already too much leverage. So because he has too much leverage. Um, it, it it becomes difficult because he all he really wants to do is go to new uh go to new uh, New York. Sorry. So what happens is is that it essentially makes it very very complicated, um, in this situation. So you know I guess we'll we'll kind of wait and see, um, as to what's gonna happen there. But um, I don't think Capo Caco would get involved in in that deal personally, in my opinion. Um, what else is there? Let's go up a little bit. Uh, as an Oilers fan, I don't think Ken Holland will pull the trigger as Gavin as he stays on if he's having the Canadian team. That's true. Um, okay, then maybe I don't know, man. That's really tough. Uh, maybe what? No, nah, not even Winnipeg because that's Canadian as well. Fuck. I don't know, man. I, I have no idea. That's a good question. I haven't really thought the answer to the Gavrikov question yet. I, I'll be honest with you. It's tough. It's tough to really think about that, um, to be honest. Uh, the Oilers just need better goaltending. Uh, they're true contenders. Jack Campbell's an 84 save percentage of season. Stuart Skinner is a backup. Still better than Mike Smith. Uh, yeah, but I think at the same time, um, like, 
I, I was a big Jack Campbell guy. Um, I liked him a lot, but he really just hasn't been good this year at all. Um, probably Zetterland, LMAO. <laughs> Haku really uh, isn't a big fan of Zetterland, from what I can tell here. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood is banged up on the Devils. Bag, bag, Blackwood is England. Bye-bye, Blackwood. So you guys think it's actually Mackenzie Blackwood. Um, so he's injured, so it's possible that it could be him. Actually, it probably is him, right? Yeah, it'd have to be him, right? Um, unless there's a guy in the AHL that's injured, it's got to be Blackwood, I think, right? So, I mean, if Blackwood gets traded, that's really interesting. Um, took from Abs Cleveland is not on Abs radar. Don't be surprised if Russell is the guy that term goes to Colorado. Uh, yeah, there's also rumors that they kicked tires on Sam Bennett. Um, I think Sam Bennett could be a guy that uh, could potentially end up there too. Um, if Florida decides to sell. But Jack Roslovic, I think, is also a player that Colorado would be interested in. Uh, Avs don't need defense. Um, they really don't need defense. So I don't think Klingberg would, would go there. Ha, do you see Thatcher Demko getting traded? He's the Canucks starting goalie, though, so I don't think they should. I don't think they should either. But um, judging by the fact that he's been, you know, there's injury concerns with him there, and I think the fact that the Canucks are trying to rebuild and just move everybody, and they've said multiple times that they'll pretty much move anybody, um, I think he does. I think he probably ends up in Buffalo or Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh do need goaltending. Buffalo does too. I think uh, I think Buffalo makes a lot of sense. I think Demko would be really well in, in Buffalo, but unless they're really high on Uko Pekaluka, then we'll see. Um, do you think Florida trades Gudis if they do the next few games? What are your th top three preferred destinations? Um, for Gudis, that's a good question. Um, Gudis, 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 Gudis. Let me think. Vegas is an option. Um, I think Vegas would be a good option for them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him potentially end up in Winnipeg as well. I think Winnipeg could use a player like Gudis. All Edmonton's always an option when it comes to defensemen. Uh, Toronto's another option that I think would make a lot of sense for Gudis. Um, so there's a few. Uh, Gudis reminds me a lot of what Jake Muzzin is. So I do think there's a possibility there um, with Toronto if Gudis would be interested. So I do, I do think there is a, a chance there if if they do decide to move Gudis. Uh, some Devils fans want to look at the Devils now. Exactly. I mean, Lindy Ruff's been great. The Devils have been fantastic. Nineteen tweets, so nothing probably. Yep. Awesome. Uh, okay, guys, so uh, let's just continue going here. We'll go for a little bit longer. We'll go till about 8.30, okay? And then if there's no trade that breaks, uh, what we'll do is once the deal officially gets announced, uh, we'll come back on uh, later. I'll come we'll, I'll come back on or if Chris comes back, um, and we'll kind of dissect the full breakdown just because, you know, it's been three hours that we're here, um, and, you know, I don't want to keep you guys here the whole time either. So if there's nothing that happens as of 8.30, um, we'll go ahead and just, you know, wait until the return comes. And then once that happens, we'll make like a 15 minute video or a 10 minute video, just kind of explaining it. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So, uh, baby sharks, don't be sad rhymer and then keep cacking in Blackwood. It's odd, but possible. Um, yeah, that is possible. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Edmonton will do the logical thing. Let's get Carlson. Come on. Isn't Edmonton getting way getting better? The defense that can't play D. I mean, Carlson would be so good in Edmonton, though. Like, he would be so good in Edmonton, though. He really would be. Like, that would be so sick. Could you imagine, like, like Eric Carlson in Edmonton? Like, that would be so sick. Like, I, I would like, I would love it. Uh, just until that's true, we should get crap. Okay, Eric Carlson has been hasn't been good since he since he was with the Senators. He's dealt with a lot of injuries. Yeah, but have you seen Carlson this year? He's on he's on a tear, man. Like he's he's just playing insane. Uh Carlson was really good with McDavid at the All-Star game. Okay. Do you see Pareko getting traded to centers and then resigning the break it? The break it, yes, I do think they will. Um do I think Colton Pareko gets traded? Depends if there's a market. I mean, Ottawa's looking for defensemen, but I don't know how serious they are about that and whether or not they're actually trying to make the playoffs. I do think Pareko makes a lot of sense uh, for them, but um I do think the Suns are going to resign the Brinkett. I, I, the trade rumors that um, he was going to get traded, I just didn't make sense to me. 
After Nita Ryder, do you think Nashville? Yes, I mean they're on the verge of trading Tanner Jano. They're going to be sellers. I don't think they believe they can make the playoffs this year. Um, and obviously, with how good the draft is, why wouldn't you be right? So, um, I mean, that's kind of how I see it. But yeah, I do think Nashville will be selling. I don't think they're going to blow it up completely, but there's been rumors of, um, you know, that. And obviously, there's like you said, um, and just to confirm, the, the, the Karina basically said Holtz he was injured last week. There's a possibility with. With that as well, I don't know if there's going to be a deal done tonight, guys. Honestly, um, it might even go into tomorrow, which at that point, I think we're just going to make a deal, uh, like a trade video um, dealing with that just because like we've been here for like three hours, guys. And I don't want to like wait too long, but it's just because, you know, we don't want to stay here all night and then there's no deal. Right. So if there's something else that comes up, I think we're going to go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll stay on a little bit longer, like I said. We'll till eight thirty, and then after that, um, we'll go and and see what we can do. Um, so let's see what happens. So they're saying it's not a done deal. Is it possible that the trade gets put on hold? I think so. Still rooting for the team. The third most points as as we approach my my trade not a done deal. Dude, Drake has the details. My guess is Alexander Holtz. Um, yeah, hearing instead of getting ahead, that Damien Bruner that's funny. Uh, just getting in Travis, it's actually almost had to make a deal with the devil. It's <laughs> funny. I'm just sorry, I'm just kind of going through all of this just to you know, kind of see what the situation is. So, they're saying that there's obviously deals. So, you guys think it's Holtz or Blackwood, right? So I think it's Holtz. It's got to be Holtz, right? There's no way that it's Blackwood. I just don't see it. Do you see Predators uh, retooling or rebuilding these users? Joe, Josie, no, because he's the captain. I don't think he gets moved. Duchesne, maybe. McDonough, probably. Um, retooling, yes. I don't think they go full rebuild, to be honest. That's just my opinion um, on Nashville's point of view. I think Duchesne probably gets traded. Josie probably gets, probably gets kept. Um, McDonough probably gets dealt. You think the Hurricanes will go after Josh Anderson? I can see him performing well with a coach like Brendan Moore. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe. Um, I'd want that. I mean, listen, I, not that I don't like the Josh Anderson. I do, but I don't think he's that good. Um, I think Carolina can uh, do really well um, with Josh Anderson in the lineup. The question is, is that what would the asking price be? Uh, probably a first or a second. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I do think that it's it's possible. I just don't think that it happens at the deadline. Uh, Ron Hextall needs to make a move like Brad Spencer, Dutch, Demko, Penguins are trying for him to be fired. Both players make a ton of sense for Pittsburgh. Um, the question is, is that does Pittsburgh believe that they're going to make it? Right? Uh, in the playoffs this year, and I just don't think they do. So, um, if that's the case, then, you know, so be it, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, so oh, man, this trade is just there's a possibility this trade doesn't even happen tonight. Like, literally, um, possibly this doesn't happen tonight. Okay. Something could be a relevant player. Who could it be? Interesting. Okay, so it could be a talk. Okay. I, I mean, instead of guessing, let's just kind of see. Um, what else? Carlson and numbers look fantastic until you see the underlying numbers on T's. Darable of Greg is a way minor for draft pick and Rossman. He should be fired. Agreed. Uh, Carlson is an offensively minded defenseman. He's nothing more than that. So to me personally, if you're getting Eric Carlson, there's you're always risking the defensive aspect of the game anyways. So um, no, tough to really figure that out. Uh, do you think Ivan Barbashev will fit well with the Golden Knights defensive pairings? The, I mean, he's a forward, so no. I don't think he'll fit well with the D pairings, but um, I mean, forward-wise, I think so. Uh, I think he's he's a player that uh, Vegas likes, um, and I think he'll fit well in in their forward group. But um, we'll see. I mean, I'm not too high on him anyways, so uh, I think he's kind of overrated. So we'll see. Um, which player that nobody's talking about that you think could be traded? 
Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. A uh, player that I think could be traded that nobody's talking about. Hmm. Well, okay. This guy's been talked about, um, but I, you know, not as much um, as the other ones. But I do think Nick Schmaltz might get traded um, out of Arizona. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, to be honest. Um, he's a guy that I think would really help a playoff team, uh, to be honest. Uh, hello from Quebec. I love this team since 2003. Obviously, it's the season that I listen to the Devils the most. Hello, Jeremy. Uh, comment ça va? Um, but yeah, so a lot of Devils fan. That's pretty cool. Do you see any players the Hurricanes might trade for? Yeah, Mike Hoffman. Please trade for Mike Hoffman. No, I'm joking. Uh, Max Domi, they had him last year. Maybe they bring him back. That could be a possibility. Um, Adam Henrique, potentially. Nick Schmaltz. Uh, maybe they circle back on a guy like Hoffman because they do want depth scoring. I could see that happening in Montreal. Uh, you know, so we'll see. What else is there here? What? Okay, so here's what I think is going on with San Jose's New Jersey's. Uh, one of the players involved, not a major piece, is injured. The two teams are sorting it out. So not a major piece means it's not Holtz. Um, or unless it is Holtz, but um, they're not uh, going to, um, you know, trade him. I personally think that it's probably like Blackwood, I would assume. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but <sighs> Dylan Cousins scored loves a while back. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, cool. All right. Um, all right. Michael Backlund getting traded. I don't know. We'll see. Friedman tweet, not a big player. Okay. Sam Bennett to Colorado. That's the rumor. The rumor is that apparently Colorado's kicking tires on him. Uh, so there's a possibility. Uh, I like it. I think it would be a good move. You're a fan of the Devils because of Brodeur. Uh, I mean, I love Marty Brodeur. I'm not a Devils fan, but I know you're talking to Jeremy. But um, I'm a big, I was a big Brodeur fan growing up, so I like him a lot. I think he's he was he was a big part of the reason why uh, the Devils, uh, you know, were so so successful. Friedman tweet not a big player. Yep. Uh, to me, the Hurricanes need to win on the road and have Freddie Anderson and Anthony Ranta stay healthy. That's what happens last year against the Rangers, especially in Game Seven. Agreed. Um. Would you guys call me crazy if I'm up if I'm pessimistic about uh, Carolina's goaltending? Um, to me, I'm very concerned about Freddie Anderson and, and Ranta in the playoffs, and I'm not sure that that cuts it for them personally. Um, you're right, Schmaltz is the other player that's being talked about in Denver market is Colorado's number two center. I I would think Schmaltz in Colorado would be so sick. Um, I think Schmaltz would absolutely fit in Colorado so well. Um, and so that's why I think that a move like that would make sense. And I think he does get traded. I think between now and 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 Friday, there's a real big possibility that he might. Is my for Arizona to be selling on deadline day? I mean, they already are. Chickering's probably going to get moved. Um, Schmaltz, I could see getting moved. I mean, it's smart in the sense where, listen, they're, they're not going to be a playoff team for a while, right? Uh, so, yes, they can sell, but I, I, they have good pieces. Like, Vamelka's good. Um, Keller's good. They've got Genther coming up. That's really good. Uh, I wouldn't trade Schmaltz, but I think he's a guy that could potentially be traded. So there's that as well. Um, so yeah, I do think they could be, they should be sellers at the deadline and, and they would be smart about it too. Do you think the devils, you guys was playing well with the devils. I really like these players. I'm a big Sharon Govich guy. I like him a lot. Um, I actually watched him last year. Um, and to be honest, um, I was a big fan of his. Um, so I'm excited. We'll see what happens with, um, with that situation. Uh, but I, I hope it doesn't get traded, to be honest. I think uh, that's going to be. Uh, so we'll see what happens um, with that. Uh, what else is there? Let's see. Kachetkov is the next Vasi, though. Maybe. Listen, Russian goaltenders in this league have been great. Um, Shorokin's been good. Shosturkin's been good. Um, I Kachetkov, I believe, is going to be the next one. I think Ranta's probably gone at the end of the season. Uh, in Carolina anyways, then they're going to go with a tandem of Freddie and Kachetkov, which I think is really good. So um, those two guys especially I think would be really nice to see. 
Um, so I'm excited. So I, I I would love to see what that's the situation in in Carolina for sure. Tanner Janot is being scratched. Good player to be to be had there for bottom six. Yeah, he probably ends up in Tampa, which is just so typical of Tampa. Um, to be honest, to get a player of Tanner Janot's uh, caliber, um, he's a guy that last year really broke out. Um, had a really good year last year. This year kind of fallen off, uh, points wise and even just production wise. But really good bottom six guy. I think he's going to help Tampa a lot if he ends up there. Um, so I like him. Um, and if he doesn't end up in Tampa, I could see potentially a team like Dallas going for him as well. I think Dallas would would love him on a fourth line or a third line role as well. I know they got that enough, but uh, Jeannot would also be a cool asset for them. When is Chikrin being traded? He's been healthy scratch for a week. I, I'll be honest, and I think Chris too said it. Um, there's um, a real big possibility that he doesn't get traded at all, um, which would be just terrible. Um, I, this whole Chikorin situation has been so annoying, to be honest. Um, they really just haven't gotten this right at all. Um, and so I'm very annoyed with it. So I just hope he does get traded just for his sake and for the Yotes' sake. But there's a possibility that he doesn't, to be honest. Um, Coyotes are trying to acquire many positive draft picks until they get the new arena. The Coyotes are playing at Arizona State. It has not been as bad as people expect. Their record at that, at that arena is actually really good. Um, and the atmosphere seems to be nice from what I've heard. Obviously, 5,000 seats is nothing, but um, people seem to like it. So, you know what? If, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, at least for now. Uh, rumors coming out that the injured player in question is Tyce Thompson, brother of Tage. That's an interesting one because Tyce Thompson, even though he's not a big big name player, he was a prospect that I think Devils fans were, were pretty keen on. Um, I know that he was a guy that they enjoyed um 23 years old you know hasn't lived up to the expectations like his brother unnecessarily has played two games in the nhl a uh, total of you know 11 games in the nhl so nothing really too special for him the expectation is pretty low but if that's the guy that's in the deal that's really holding it up i hope that that gets settled soon but 23 points in 36 games in the in the uh, ahl He's he's a decent player. I've watched him play a few times in the um, in the AHL. Uh, not a bad player, but nothing too spectacular to to really say about him. The Leafs are chasing records and chasing goalies. Okay, um, yeah. So we will see what's gonna happen uh, moving forward here, guys, with the rest of this situation. Um, I'm excited. Uh, to kind of see what's uh, what's gonna happen here. Uh, fuck, man. There's so many like, there's so many moves that are being made. Like, I've been here for like two hours now, trying to wait for this move, and nothing seems to be going. Um, which I mean, it sucks, but you know, at the same time, like, it is what it is. It's part of the business, right? You got to do what you got to do. I think what's probably gonna happen, and I like I said. In about 15 minutes, maybe even less, I might just call it quits at some point, And then we'll, I guess, recircle back once the deal is officially announced. Just because we've been waiting so long. Um, so, I guess we'll do that. Uh, one or two games, sure. But Chikrin is a lot. Uh, and Gavrikov, too, for sure. Uh, did Shana add an update? Let's see. Did she add any other update after that? I don't think she did, huh? No, she didn't. All right. Interesting. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, what else is there over here? Oh, a lot of questions. Okay. Well, not really. Uh, could Seamus Casey and David Seamus be a part of this trade? Uh, Severson, no, because I think the Devils are in a playoff run now. They don't really want to make that move for Severson. Seamus Casey, though, I do see as a possibility. Um, uh, Scott Harrington. So... I know a little bit about him. Um, I can tell you that he's he's a decent depth defenseman. He's probably not going to play many games for New Jersey um, in terms of uh, where they're at. Um, but one thing I can tell you is that uh, he's decent. He's he's a good, you know, stable defenseman. He'll be a good seventh defenseman, maybe eighth. Probably plays in the AHL a little bit too. Um, he's a good guy in case injuries go down. Um, but he's not the main piece to that trade. Uh, Penguins training Don Marino is a mistake. Ty Smith is mostly an NHL defenseman, in my opinion. Absolutely, I agree with that. I think Ty Smith, uh, to be completely honest with you, um, I was high on him when he was there, but he just hasn't lived up to the expectations. Um, and John Marino has been great, so uh, proud of him, happy happy for him. So we'll see what happens with uh, John Marino. 
um, in terms of that. Um, and then there is a starter next season, Vitek Vatacek or Akira Schmidt. To be honest, Vatacek's going to be the starter. Schmidt's going to be the backup. That's kind of what's going to happen. Um, in my opinion, I don't see how they don't give the starting job to um, Vanacek, considering how well he's played. Um, yeah, it's scorching right now. It feels like the trade deadline. <laughs> uh, here are all the live updates. Let's check this out. All right, perfect. Um, oops. Uh, sorry, Ryan Nazuski, 15 tweets. Sorry, guys. I'm just, this is going to be an all time plea. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> it's funny. Um, all right. Uh, Vitek definitely. Do you see the Canucks retooling or rebuilding? Rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. One hundred percent rebuilding. Um, they they already traded away Bo Horvat. That's their captain. Once you do that, you're asking for a rebuild at that point. Um, and I think that it's ultimately going to happen. So, um, I would say that there is a, a good chance of that happening, um, where they're going to rebuild. But I don't see a situation where. Uh, they retool. They're re they're rebuilding 100. percent Like I'd be very surprised if they went for a small retool. John Marino is so good with the Devils, except against Montreal, probably because of a flu. Um, I mean, one game doesn't justify a player, to be honest. Um, but to be honest, yeah, he's been very good this season. John Marino, he's had a really good year. Um, it seems that it's unlikely that OEL and Tyler Myers get traded because they're yeah. I mean, Tyler Myers. There's been rumors about that he potentially might get moved. Um, I wouldn't take either. They're both not good and overpaid. Um, OEL is not getting traded. There's just no way. So, Andreas Johnson believed to be part of the return. Really? Is that what it's? Is that the rumor? Is that actually the rumor? I didn't see that um, anywhere. So, unless you guys saw it, I didn't see it. Um, but I'm also not checking 100%. So, we'll see. Okay, a second. What is here? Oh, oh, I didn't hear anything in terms of uh, the Timo Meyer deal. Uh, that's crazy. Anyways, guys, um, whew. Yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of nothing, man. This is such a long waiting game. Oh, Andreas Johnson is believed to be part of the return. So there it is. Elliot Friedman just confirmed that. So so far, so far, we have uh, just to summarize it completely, one hundred percent. For thank you, by the name uh, is Needles, by the way. Um, I missed the, the tweet, so thank you for tweeting that out uh, and saying it. I just got it right here. Um, so appreciate that for um, um, for you know reporting that. So thank you very much. Uh, do you think the crack can make any trades? Probably. I think they'll add a few guys. Uh, nothing too big. Um, maybe Gavrikov. Maybe they'll go on defense and get Gavrikov um, on defense. That could be a possibility. But um, yeah, I'll think maybe a, a deal or two I, I could see them making for sure. Um Andres Johnson. So actually, just to re-summarize the trade, guys, because um, we've been here for a while. So basically, San Jose essentially acquired. Um, so San Jose gave up Timo Meyer, Scott Harrington, so far from what we know, and fifty percent retained on um, uh, on the Sharks' end, right? For the for uh, for New Jersey, what the return so far from what we know a little bit, it could be Fabian Zetterlin. Andreas Janssen, a first-round pick, right? Andreas Janssen, like uh, Nito said, has a no-move clause. That could be what's holding things up. Apparently, Elliot Freeman said in a video that it's actually not. It's actually because of an injury update, which could be Andreas Janssen as well, or Tyce Thompson. So if it is Tyce Thompson, uh, that's also a big possibility. But so far, the return seems underwhelming for uh, San Jose. 
uh, to be honest. I mean, Janssen's a cap dump, uh, which, you know, when he gets an opportunity in San Jose, not a big deal. Uh, Swedish as well. Uh, Zetterlin also Swedish. So, you know, another opportunity there. San Jose trying to, you know, bring up the Swedes together. So that makes sense if, if Zetterlin's actually part of the deal. First round pick, interesting. So, yeah, so far, so good um, for them. Uh, Janssen's a cap dump, but I think there's more being added for sure. Do you think Grubauer and Martin Jones is a good enough goalie time? No. Uh, Jones Jones has had a good season. Uh, hasn't been lights out, but has played relatively decent. Um, Grubauer has not been great. Um, has played well the last couple of games, um, but hasn't didn't do well last year, and I'm not optimistic about him, so we'll see um, on that front. Uh, 18 tweets. What else is going on here? Hearing Jack Hughes is not... A, <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay, let's hope that this deal gets um, continued uh, presence here. So, yeah, like, I don't know why they're not just leaking the full return at this point. Just do it. Is believed to be part of the return going to San Jose. I'm just going to kind of leave it here for now. Fridge is usually always... He's Fridge, you know? So, anyways... We'll see what happens. Um, but that's the deal so far. It's such a crazy opportunity, man. Is Chickering gone? Is Chickering gone? Who will be the next leader on the Arizona decor? <sighs> Good question. Uh, they're going to have to draft one, most likely, because uh, they don't have anybody right now uh, that, that I think personally would lead them to that type of uh, commitment. Um, if the Leafs lose the first round, they have to disband the decor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think if if they lose, they they really they, they really have no excuse to lose this year, like zero. Um, so to me personally, like that's the biggest um, that's the biggest thing is if that happens, like that's huge. So we'll see. Uh, interesting. What was this? I don't know what I did here. Oh, because I like the tweet. Okay, cool. Um, so they're still saying that it's going to be uh, Johnson. So have they said who the Devils gave up? Rumor has it so far, Andreas Jan. That's what the Devils supposedly gave up, but that's not ha that hasn't been a hundred percent confirmed yet. So we'll have to wait and see. Could TJ also get traded? Probably. I mean, I suggested it the other day when we were talking about it. Um, he's a guy that has, uh, you know, not digressed, but um, hasn't always been, uh, you know, he's a guy that could be a potential trade asset. Obviously, Anthony Manta as well. But it depends on what the plan is for Washington moving forward, right? Are they trying to rebuild or is it just a one-off with Orlov and, and Hathaway? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, what else is there? Let's see, nothing else. All right, trade related reasons. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, perfect. We're gonna wait a little longer. Um, We're going to wait a little longer. We're going to keep it going for a bit longer. Damn, there really just hasn't been anything. This is this is terrible. I don't know why it's taking so long to like leak this, but anyways, who do we know who the third possible third team is in the Meyer deal? Nope. Uh we don't uh I wouldn't be surprised if it's either Vancouver or Montreal. Because uh, they said they wanted to be brokers. So that's a possibility as well. Uh, Oshi's contract sucks. Actually, you know what? Let me, let's do, you know what? Since we're here, we have nothing better to do. Why don't we look at it together? Right. So just give me two seconds here. Washington. TJ Oshi makes 5.7 for the next three years. He's also on a modified no trade clause. Yeah, no. Uh, you're going to have to retain salary if you trade uh, TJ Oshie. Um, 
that's tough. That's very tough. What's gravity? Oh, Nikita of Tokyo is also part of the deal to San Jose. Interesting. So that's probably the prospect. So right now, interesting, guys. So actually, you just saw it here right now. Uh, Nikita Oktokio. I don't know how to say that name. Oktokio, Oktokio, Oktokio. I'll go with that. Uh, so actually, that's what um, Brad Pack was talking about before. So uh, right now, as we as we know uh, from what Shayna tweeted out, unless that's inaccurate, is it's going to be Janssen, Oktokio. Actually, let's just. Oopsies. Uh, what else is there? What else is there? What else is there? What else is there? Okay, no, we gotta go back to Fridge. Okay, well, anyways, back to what I was saying. So, Oktokio. So so far, let's just let's just all you know kind of pay attention to this essentially. So, Oktokio, Nikita Oktokio, uh, Andreas Janssen. Those are the two that are believed to be part of the deal, right? Then you have Zetterland. That's the rumor. And the first round pick. So that's four pieces. Uh, Tokyo is a decent pros- prospect. Zetterland's a decent prospect. So if that's two prospects, that's pretty good. You get um, Janssen, who's a cap dump and a roster player. And then the first round pick, that's if there's more. Uh, and for San Jose, Scott Harrington, Timo Meyer, and 50%. We'll see what the third team is in this deal. Um, but to be honest, not a good move for for San Jose so far. Like Octavio is decent. Like he's he's a good he's a good D prospect. I think he's gonna pan out. He's gonna probably play in the NHL and be really good. But this is an underwhelming return, in my opinion, guys. Like I don't know about you. Andreas has a ten team Australia. His agent confirmed San Jose is not on that list. So clear pathway to include him in this deal. Okay, perfect. So San Jose is not on that list. Interesting. So Octo- so yeah, like I said, Andreas Janssen, and now they're just saying that Octokio as well is part of the deal of San Jose. Um, that could be the injury concern as well. So Octokio, Andreas Janssen. So as it's coming down slowly, um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see uh, what else is in this deal. Uh, Meyer. Okay. Yeah. There's a number of devils that won't be in the deal until spring and have a Tuesday's pod. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, guys, I'm just looking at everything. I'm uh, trying to find out what the situation is. going. No, no, no. What the hell's going on? Oh, oh, wow. Okay, whoa. Big Shana Bomb. Here we go. This is what we were waiting for, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have it right here in front of us. I don't know if this is the full deal. All right? I'm not 100% sure, but Shayna just tweeted out, Nikita Oktakiuk, Andreas Janssen are part of the return going to San Jose. Devils are also moving a conditional 2024 first-round draft pick plus Shakir Makamadoulin. Wow. That is a blockbuster haul of a deal. So, Oktakiuk, Andreas Janssen. Okay are part of the return going to San Jose, moving a conditional 2024 first and Shakir Makamadoulin. So does that mean Zetterlin and the third are not, uh, the first rounder are not there, right? So is that is that the deal, right? Is that is that what it is? Oktokio, two, so two prospects, a first and a roster player. That probably makes sense. So Oktokio, Makamadoulin, a first and a 2024 conditional first and Andreas Janssen is probably the return. So that's that's huge. Let's just, let's go check. On where everybody else, on what everybody else tweeted. Um, oh, Panyota. The deal includes, all right. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Panyota just said trade details include team as they come through, hearing Meyer and Harrington for a package that includes Shakir Makamadoulin, um, Zetterlin, Johnson, 
Octavio at a 2023 first round draft pick. Interesting. So guys, so wow, the Devils gave up a lot, man. Wow. What are your guys? Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's let's look at this from from this situation, okay? Makabadulin is sick. Okay? He's fantastic. I think he's going to be a great D prospect for them. That's that's a wow. That's a good prospect to get. Zetterlin, people are high on him. They think that honestly speaking, um, he's going to be a good asset for them. So I like Shakir Makamadoulin. Actually, guys, let's start doing some research here. All right. So Shakir, uh, we're gonna just we're gonna we're gonna stay on for another ten minutes, just breaking down this and and seeing what the the next you know thing is gonna be. So Makamadoulin. Uh, Zetterlin. Well, Zetterlin, we we looked at, but we'll look at him again. Um, and then I want to look at Oktakiuk, uh, Nikita Oktakiuk as well. Uh, Washington, we don't need this. Um, Oktakiuk, Oktakiuk, I don't even know how to spell it. Nikita, I'll just write Nikita Oktakiuk and they'll they'll understand. I don't know how to write this guy's name. Nikita Ok, that's the one. That's the one. There you go. Um, and then Andreas Janssen. Andreas Janssen. Oh, well. Um, DB. DB. Cool. Fantastic. Perfect. So, uh, I want to just check one last time. Please tell me they have the full breakdown of the trade. They still don't. Are you kidding me, guys? Oh, league trade call is done. League trade call is done. Timo Meyer is officially a New Jersey Devil. So, guys, we can celebrate for the first time tonight. We will be able to celebrate as New Jersey has officially, according to Pierre Lebrun, officially uh, acquired Timo Meyer from the um, San Jose Sharks. So, this is absolutely huge uh, right here. Um, so there you go. Absolutely big trade coming out of um, San Jose. Let's wait on the official final report on this deal um, and what the actual uh, trade is going to officially be. We're waiting on the final confirmation. So I don't know if there's a third team involved. Um Uh, okay, fantastic. All right. Okay, so actually, let's start looking through this. So Shakir Kamadulu was a first-round pick, 20th overall by New Jersey. 25 uh, points, 67 games with Solovat Yulaev. Uh, very good defenseman. I think he's going to be solid um, for the San Jose Sharks in their prospect pool. I like this move. 21 years old. He's going to be great for the Sharks. Um, Absolutely love it. Uh, great player. Awesome. Cannot complain. Nikita Oktokyuk, um, six points in 20 games in the AHL, one goal in 10 games with New Jersey, actually two goals in his career. Um, he's also a really good player. I think there's a lot of hype around him as well. Uh, good, good big body, uh, six foot one, 195. So not the biggest body, but still, still a decent player. Um, I think he's going to be a big part of the trade too. So I like it a lot. Uh, for Tokyo as well. Second round pick, 61st overall in 2019. And then Andreas Janssen and obviously Fa Fabian Zetterlin, who we already spoke about. Uh, Janssen's doing well in the AHL. Again, just a body. Makes $3 million this year. Probably not going to get much um, out of him. So there you go. And then Fabian Zetterlin, Trader San Jose, is a young defense first bottom six winger. So if you look at his stats, again, very good player. Um, just to kind of zoom in here a little bit for you guys uh, so you guys can uh, look at this deal. Um, I'm very happy about that, right? So Zetterlin's a really good player. 53, uh, you know, even strength offense, 87, even strength defense, very good defense first player. Lacks finishing. Um, his goals per 60 aren't the best. His assist per 60 is very good. Um, shredding all uh, Russian assets, trading two first. They, I think, why is the experiment? I think they only traded one first. I'm trying to still get official clarity on that. Um, but yeah, so Zetterlin... Looking at his advanced analytics, he looks like a good player. I think he's going to be solid for San Jose. So Zetterland heads to 
San Jose. What a wow! As this trade's coming in, guys, now we're we're starting to see something huge here um, with this. So, um, okay, uh, okay. Uh, Janssen, like I said, body, n- nothing more than that. He's just a, a cap dump. Um, Timo Meyer and obviously Scott Harrington, 50% retained. Oktokiuk and Makamadoulian are two big prospects. And then obviously Zetterlin and the first round pick. Now, we're still waiting just for final details. I want to wait to see what like the other ones say, just uh, Elliot Friedman or uh, potentially Pierre Lebrun, just to finally confirm this deal officially. And then once we get that, we will be able to, or if New Jersey officially announced the deal, we'll be able to uh, end the video completely. But that looks like what the return is going to be. I want to know your guys' thoughts, uh, please, in the comments down below. I don't know why I have a video, a picture of Jeffrey Epstein here. I'm not going to do that. I am going to go up because people don't need to see that. Um, and that's not part of the video. Uh, no print. Oh, wow. Okay, full trade. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, boys. So... James Nichols just tweeted out uh, Timo Meyer 50% retained and Scott Harrington 4. Fabian Zetterlin, Andreas Janssen, Nikita Oktokio, Shakir Makamadoulin, a 2023 first rounder and a conditional 2020. Wow. So that's two first round picks, technically three if you count Makamadoulin as a first round pick as well. Uh, that's a haul. San Jose got a haul. This is huge. I want what's the condition on the first? What's the condition on the first? I want to know the condition on the 20. This guys, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below right now. Whoever's watching this video, please tell me your thoughts on this deal. Timo Meyer 50% retained and Scott Harrington for Fabian Zetterlin, Andreas Janssen, Nikita Tokyo, Shakir Makamadoulin, a first round pick and a conditional first round pick. So two first rounders going to San Jose. You know what, guys? Looking at this trade from where it is, San Jose did well. San Jose did well. Um, guys, San Jose did well. Uh, that's a haul. That's a haul. Like, you know what? Like, like the King Ran- That I agree. That that's a King's ransom. Like, look, don't get me wrong. Okay, people would have probably wanted. Um, People probably would have wanted um, uh, Holtz in the deal. The problem was they didn't get it. So what they did is um, they essentially just did what they were supposed to do. Um, but, I mean, the first basically beats that. What's the great deal for San Jose? Will that, will that be their uh, building blocks for the future? Yep. Well, we kept our most valuable ration. I said to It's true. I said to as well. Boston better watch out. Yep. That's going to be fun. So let's just go one last time. I just want to make sure that um, everything is all said and done here. Trade alert. 50% retain. I want to know the condition on that 2024 first. What is the condition on this? Um... That's all we're going to wait for, guys. So everything is pretty much done here. Um, as you know, um, as NHL News reported, required f- for all this, basically, which we just talked about. McCamadoulin is a big piece, uh, big player. I'm happy about that. Oktokiuk as well. Janssen, a first-round pick. I want to know the condition on 2024 first, and then we're going to end the video here, guys. Um, we've been going on for three hours and 47 minutes. It's been made too much just for him. Uh, I mean, listen, you're going to pay for a 26-year-old RFA who's a stud. So I don't know if it's too much, but it's it's a good haul. It's a haul. It's it's very good. Is the 20 pick in 24 of Meyer signs? I, I think so. And that's probably what I think it will be. Um, but we'll see. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, Devils didn't have to trade Holtz or Casey. Exactly. And I think they still get to they keep Holtz at Casey, which is huge. Because uh, they didn't have to move it. They probably felt that Casey was better than McCabadoulin. So they went with with uh, McCabadoulin instead, which, I mean, is understandable. You have to give up guys at the end of the day. So it works out. And Holtz, 
They get to keep him, so I think the Devils still believe in him, which is nice. But wow, Timo Meyer is a New Jersey Devil. Absolutely huge. Shaq is good, but not on the level of the Kishin. That's also the other thing, too, right? He hasn't been at, at, his, at his best either. So we'll see. Either if Meyer resigns or the Devils get a certain round in the playoffs. That's what I think it's probably going to be, right? It's going to be one of the two for sure. Uh, so we'll see. And then uh, NJ still has Hughes and Nemec. So, yeah, but they weren't going to move Hughes or Nemec anyways. I just want to see, guys. Let's. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna stay very long. Maybe another like five minutes max. I just want to see if there's a condition on this. If they don't announce the condition in the next five minutes, I'm gonna end it anyways, because we're at a point now where like it's just getting too late, and like we've already pretty much like. Sharks get a conditional first. Now, what's the conditional first? Let me read if Ryan Novosinski already tweeted it uh, out in here. Did he? 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 No. What the fuck? Uh. I don't know why it's not letting me. Oh, because I have to subscribe to that. Uh, we're not subscribing to that. Okay. SDPN. All right. Pull. Perfect. Nice. Uh, so we're going to just wait a couple of minutes. One. We're going to wait like two or three more minutes, and then we're just going to end it. Okay. Um Devils got a proven player still keeping still keep all their best problems a huge win. Absolutely. I think the Devils win this deal, guys. Honestly, um they get they get Timo. Look, both teams both teams come out on top. Sharks get two first round picks potentially, right? Like that's a conditional 2020. That's that's wow. They get like Salze did well here in this deal. Um and New Jersey get Timo Meyer. So very good. Now, if New Jersey doesn't resign Timo Meyer, that's terrible. But besides that, Timo Meyer, man, that's huge. Good for Salze. Timo solid. Did the Rangers and the Islanders move? Moves pushed into this. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, well, not really. I think New Jersey wanted Meyer from the beginning, but I think seeing the range and the Islanders doing what they did uh, had no choice. Uh, I think it's a good trade for both sides. It, exactly. I completely agree. I think both teams get what they want. Uh, New Jersey didn't have to give up anything big in terms of their prospects. Makama Doolin's a big prospect. I'll to you too, but nothing to the point where it's like they had to give up Holtz and stuff and, and Seamus Casey. So, uh, Devils fans should be happy about it, and I think so should um, San Jose. But it shows the Devils are going for it. Uh, Devils win the trade. Meyer get, get team on keep their best prospects. Exactly, all players are mad. Better hope they use those draft picks. Why are they sure the Devils will sign Devers? I believe so. All right, let's just check one last time, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. San Jose got the witch in them. <laughs> Brutal. Um, okay. Well, you know what, guys? Uh, I'm going to end the video here. Um, when the condition comes out, uh, I guess we'll see it. Um, I don't want to wait too long for the condition. I know it could take a couple of hours before it happens. I'm going to end the video here. It's been great talking to you guys. If you guys haven't subscribed to the Young Guns podcast already, please do. Just to reiterate the trade, I will put it on the screen for you one last time so you guys have it. Um, right in front of you. So it's on James Nichols that confirmed the deal officially. And he said um, this was the official deal. So just to confirm um, everyone. And this deal puts the Sharks just over the 50 contract limit, meaning that there might be a second deal coming. But I'm going to end it here for now. Um, so let's see what happens moving forward with this situation. Uh, thank you for watching, boys and girls. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Peace.